What's up guys? It's yo boy Omnisensei. Welcome to What If I Was Reborn as an Original Evolving to Godhood, Part 1. Like, share, and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story, link in the description. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. In the lodge of a village, a woman is giving birth. On her side holding her hand stood her husband. She pushes one last time. Few minutes later a baby cry can be heard. A black woman take the baby boy. But holding him, she starts feeling her energy be siphoned. She quickly clean him before giving him to his father. You shall be named Samuel, a fierce warrior and a strong hunter. Say the husband to the baby who have black hair and black eyes containing a lot of intelligence for a newborn. Husband, let me see our son. Tell the mother to her husband. Here, take him, woman. The man give the boy to her. But keep his gaze on him with hidden fondness. The door of the lodge open, and the children enter. Mother, father, can we see our new little brother? Ask two boys holding the hands of a younger boy who look nervous. Yes, come Finn, Elijah, and you too Nicholas, he is your new little brother. And his name is Samuel Mickelson. Answer the mother who look exhausted after giving birth. The three boy look at the baby with love, protectiveness and a little bit of awe. Now enough. I need rest. Finn can you take him please? Your father has to go hunting with your brothers. She asks her older son. Of course mother. Answer Finn with a happy smile. He always likes it when his mother trusts him, taking the small baby. They all leave the room, letting her appreciate a long merited rest. Years later. In the forest, a man and a teenager with black hair track the traces of an animal. They move without making sound. They stop and keep the distance with the deer. They stalked it until it stopped moving. Sam take his bow and start arming an arrow. Good. Now slow your breathing. Aim. Hold your breath and release your arrow. Mikkel instruct his son while keeping a keen eye on the target. Sam did as told and released the arrow. The two walk to it and inspect the corpse. The arrow had penetrated the heart, and the beast died instantly. Mikkel lifts the deer and places it on his back. On their way back to the village, Mikkel turned his head toward his son. You are a very good hunter, much better than your weak brother was at your age. He finishes with an angry tone. Thank you, father. Respond, Sam politely following his father. After a long walk they arrive at home. Once inside Sam go to his room and sit on his bed relaxing himself he starts thinking about his family. His father seems getting angrier after the years. Quite amusing to watch when he can't keep his snarky comment to himself. Nick probably find it very tempting to get rid of their father. But he instead seeks his approval and fatherly love. Sam personally would have slit Mikkel throat in his sleep if he was in Nicholas shoes. His little brother Cole keep causing mischief and love to play tricks on the family. He's very close with their little sister Rebecca. She keeps growing more beautiful day after day. She is kind of naive, but not to be underestimated, especially with a knife even in her delicate hands. Elijah him can't stop himself to constantly try to protect Nick from the beating from Mikkel. His good nature will probably cause his death. And finally Finn, nothing special to say about him. They are not close at all, probably jealousy about the time he spends with their mother, if his upset face is an indication. And they're him, Samuel Mickelson, he is extremely curious and eager to learn. He can be sweet as an angel or the opposite, his father particularly like his ruthless side and his fighting abilities. He's rebellious too, taking and doing what he wants, his mother always tells him he's more cunning than her, he's a warlock. But he is different from his siblings. He learned why when he was seven by sneaking and listening a discussion between his mother and her friend Ayana. Flashback. As to you know he's special, he can siphon magic. But he also has his own. He is the only one like that, a loophole, a miracle of nature. Say Ayana to her best friend with an excited face. I know, I know, his potential is very good. I just want to give him time to think about learning witchcraft answer Esther. Oh, but I think he is interested, aren't you Sam? Ask with amusement Ayana. Sounds draw the attention of Esther, and she catches the hidden figure of her son. She shakes her head with exasperation and a gentle laugh. Flashback end. Stopping his wandering mind from going too far, he stood up and prepared himself for a discussion with his mother. He leaves his room and go to his mother's private room. This morning she said she wanted to discuss with him. Sam intuition told him this is about his progress in magic. Mother I'm here, announced Samuel. Good come inside. I want to talk to you my son. Speak Esther with warm. Sam don't wait any longer. Enter. And he sits down in front of his mother. You are smart Samuel. More curious and perceptive than your siblings. You know you are different. You can siphon magic. But you also have your own. You are the only one like that. And you have much more power than me at your age. In the future with your knowledge on witchcraft and your talent for it, you will probably become the best warlock of your time. But you already know that comma. 
but you don't seem interested in this, so what do you want? She asked him with a curious look and a hint of pride. I am indeed not interested in becoming the greatest. What I want is to pursue magic more and deep. I love it and want to know its secrets even the darkest, don't you mother? He answers with a question of his own and observe her reaction. Maybe in my younger years, but I was never fascinated with magic as you are. You make me remember Dahlia. She finished with a nostalgic and sad smile. Who is Dahlia mother? Ask an interested Sam hearing for the first time this name. A ghost from my past. But you don't have to worry about that. Let me show you a spell. A really special one. Answer Esther, diverting his attention from the subject of this mysterious ghost. Autumn 1001. A handsome young man is leaning against a giant tree, reading a book about herbs with magical proprieties. Magic is fascinating, even after years of practice and learning. There is still so much that remain unknown. But the more Sam understand, the more he starts doubting the teaching of his mother. Magic, nature or mystic energy like he sometimes calls it, is no concept of bad or good. It just exists, like an endless source. You can use it, manipulate it. So why would he keep himself to only one type of magic? Or become a servant of it like the other's witches? After this revelation he starts practicing dark magic and others. He of course hide it from his mother. He has no doubt that she would disagree with him. But being busy with his research, had created a rift between him and his siblings. While Rebecca, Nick Cole and Elijah grew closer. A few years ago his parents conceived another child, Henrik the youngest Mickelson member. Nick spent all his time with him, and Becca finally have a little brother to annoy. Finishing reading the page about a particular poisonous plant, he's alerted by loud screams coming from his brother. Mother! Mother help! Scream! A crying class carrying Henrik body. Esther run to Henrik and look for a sign of life, but it's too late, he's already dead. What happened Nicholas? She asked full of sorrow. We went to see the wolves last night. But one attack Henrik answer Nick with guilt in his voice. After this tragic event, their parents organize a family dinner. Usually Mick will take his meal alone and Sam too. But tonight his mother insisted for the whole family to eat together. His mother serve a glass of wine for each member except for her. And give it to each of them. Our family lived a difficult moment. But it will make us stronger. Now drink. Say sternly his father. They all drink the wine and start eating. His brothers and his sister lay dead by his side. He certainly wasn't accepting his parents to do this. Under normal circumstances he would have been able to defend himself. But the wine makes him unable to focus and use his magic. He tried to evade the sword. But was no fast enough. The blow killed him in seconds. Ah, he wakes up and gasps for air. Looking around him, he saw his siblings still dead. But their wounds have healed. What happened? Ask Elijah waking up shocked, inspecting his chest desperately looking for the wound left by the blade. The others start waking up soon after. Their mother and father enter the room. Mikkel holds a woman and slash her wrist. Drink girl. Order his father to Rebecca. Reluctantly she approaches her mouth and start drinking. Her eyes change, the veins under her eyes becomes visible, she has fangs, she looked like a predator. When his sister stopped he approached the girl. The moment he drank her blood he became obsessed with it. He lost himself in his bloodlust, when he stopped he had already drank all of her blood. The week following their transition, they discovered that they have gained super strength, speed, healing, their emotions all get amplified, everything they were before was sublimed. Samuel who was a little indifferent to others became colder, calculating, his trust issue worsened and he is now extremely secretive. After a period of adaptation to his new state he checked his magic. He found out he had kept it hours later when his mother said to him, he couldn't use magic anymore. He decided to not reveal it to her or anyone, knowing now what she's really capable of. He wouldn't take the risk. But in exchange for Theses' new abilities, they've become predator with a thirst for blood, cursed to live the night and burn to the sun. Their neighbors can now keep them out of their houses, and the white oak tree that gift them immortality could take it back, the flowers growing around became poisonous to them. Very fast Sam understood that his mother used the unique spell she showed him one or two years ago. There were only pieces of the first immortality spell, so she probably changed it and made her own one. He discovered she used the sun, the white oak tree and the blood of a depelganger. He patiently waited the night and to be alone before taking a branch of it. Days later they burned the whole tree to the ground. For the double, with his mother at proximity, he preferred not doing anything reckless. He always had been patient. About his condition he probably is the one with Mikkel who enjoyed it the most. Before his strength and agility was only human and imperfection. Like nature the body need balance. With magic as potent as his, his body was no match. But now he wouldn't be burdened by it. To fix their problem with the sun, their mother made them daylight rings. They learned to control their hunger. But while Samuel, Mikkel and Fing quickly controlled their bloodlust in weeks the others had more difficulties. None more than Klaus. Sam retract his fangs and snap the neck of the man and focus on his super hearings. Ah, brother what is happening to me? Ah, it hurts brother. He heard Nick say to Elijah. 
Don't approach him, Elijah, he's a beast, a bastard, exclaims his father with disgust and anger. His father and Elijah grab Nick and brought him to Esther. Later in the night, watching hiding in the bush, Sam can't help but celebrate the fact he kept his capacity to still use magic a secret. It could have been him on this cross being cursed by his mother. He doesn't really understand why his parents are doing this. They wanted them strong, and now they weaken Nichols, a logic, and the hypocrisy of his mother keeping nature balance ridiculous. She was the one who broke the balance, thinks Sam while keeping an eye on the situation. Finally, the ritual finished and Elijah free Nick. Sam from his place can see a burning rage in the eyes of Klaus. Not wanting to be discoverer, he escaped in the darkness. A perfect opportunity and with a little bit of luck, Nick will be blinded by his fury and I won't have to lift a finger. He mumbles to himself a devious smirk and a cunning glint in his eyes. 1002 February. One year. They kept running from Mikkel for a year, and the tensions between the siblings keep growing. Last week they did something new. During one of their feasts of blood, they discover a survivor, Lucian. He revealed to them that their victims were nobles. In exchange for letting him live, he would help them impersonate the identities of the nobles. They now live in the castle of the Count de Martel since one month. The aristocratic way of life is particularly liked by Samuel and Elijah who find interest in passing time with Tristan, the heir of the Count. As for Klaus and Lucien, them seem to feel a strong attraction for the daughter of the Count de Martel. It will probably become a good source of drama. Though Sam the first time he saw the three together. Cole is as always frivolous, and Finn still hasn't accepted the transition. Rebecca seemed to be happy. She found a friend in Aurora, the daughter of Count de Martel. 1002, October. In a dark room, barely illuminated by candles and the light of the moon, sitting or more precisely unconscious on a chair, is a man wearing low-quality clothes, thick droplets of blood falling from his head, creating an annoying noise. Test number 5, Experimentation on Mental Control, or more communally known as Hypnosis. The cold and indifferent voice is interrupted by groans coming from the unconscious man on the chair. The subject number 6 is waking up, the final part of the experimental. The subject hearing the cold voice try to be brave, ignoring the terror he feels, and his instinct screaming at him to move to run away. He raises his head, and look at the origin of the voice. He barely has the time to see a handsome man with black hair and black eyes, when suddenly a hand hold his throat, not hard enough to totally suffocate him, but enough to keep him from moving. His eyes locked with the black eyes of the strange man. Do not move, say the man, compelling the terrified man to obey. I want you to tell me what you did four days ago, and do not lie. But before you begin, here, you should drink this cup of water I don't want you to have a sore throat in the middle of a story. Say Samuel still compelling the man and holding a cup of water to him. Four months ago, I, I I slept with my wife's sister, I was drunk. The next day, I meet her and explain to her that it was a mistake and that we should forget it. But, but she kept saying she was feeling guilty about it and was going to explain what happened to my wife. I couldn't let that happen, so I tried to convince her. She didn't want to listen. I just pushed her a little, I swear. And she, she falls, there was so much blood so much. It was an accident, I never wanted to hurt her. Start telling the man, his facial distorted by despair when he realized he is forced to reply. When I saw all the blood and her immobile, I panicked. I was going to run away, but then I saw him, her little boy, Anthony. The moment I saw his terrified face filled with tears, I knew what had to be done. He witnessed me pushing his mother. If I let him go, I was going to be imprisoned or worse killed exclamation point. So when I saw he was ready to scream, I lunge myself at him, tackle him to the ground and bash his head with all my strength. I let out all my frustration, panic, anger on that kid. After that I run away from the house, and get back at my place, clean myself, and try to forget everything about that night. I really didn't want it to end that way. Finish the man while sobbing. Experience 5 complete. The first command, given to subject number 6, was to have an affair and do everything to keep it a secret. Results colon. Subject number 6 successfully keep the secret at all cost, even at the detriment of his morality and life of others. Say Samuel, while he speaks he writes the results and his observations on papers. Thank you for your participation, you have played your part perfectly subject number 6 say Sam leaving the room, but before he closed the door, the man start to speak. You, you did this. Who are you? Why? Why? Answer me. Scream with rage and hate, the man still unable to move. It won't help you to know subject number 6. You served your purpose. Answer Sam closing the door. One hour later in the cell. Coughs can be heard inside the cell, subject number 6 still seated like a statue start vomiting blood. Outside the cell, Samuel can be seen writing something about a glass of water in time of death, after consuming Actia Spicata. 1002, December. Fire, pure and purifying, Nikos approached the pyre, and as he is about to light it, he expressed his confusion. I don't understand. I gave him my blood. He should have healed. Say class with sadness. Elijah walks towards him and lay a comforting hand on his shoulder. Good drama indeed. Think Sam in this exact moment having already determined what happened. He was already dead Nichols. There is nothing you could have done. Respond Elijah. 
But as he finishes speaking, Lucian gets up and takes a deep breath. Getting down from the pyre he starts walking in circle with excitement. Samuel, Cole, Finn, Elijah and Rebecca watch with surprise, each having different thoughts about this new development. Hours later Sam in his chamber kept thinking about what he and his family discovered tonight. They could change others too became like them. He decided to call the process the transition based on his experience and watching tonight events. His final thoughts on this are that there is a lot of potential, but accompanied by a lot of risks. Putting that in a corner of his mind, he focuses on what he will do next, now that he have mastered his powers gained by his transformation. He has perfect control of his strength and speed, his reflexes allow him to catch multiple arrows shot at him. His bloodlust while under control can still overpower him if he hasn't fed in a long time. He tests his limit and find he can function for two weeks without blood. He theorized that by becoming older his resistance will increase. His mental abilities seem to become more powerful with a constant use, and an hour or two of meditation per day. A skill his father teach him when he was a young boy. He can now invade and modify the dreams of other, and can also see memories. Watching the city of Marseille, he finally took a well-considered decision. Leaving, he had accomplished his objective of understanding and controlling his new state, so it is now the time to leave and explore the world. When he was human you could say that his hunger for knowledge was already monstrous. But after his transition, this curiosity grew into something something more deep and dangerous. Three weeks later, all the Mickelson reunited around dinner. It promises to be an interesting night, note to himself Sam. While he takes his place at the table, servants serve the dinner and leave the room. The family, except for Samuel, still hasn't adapted to the fact that they don't need to eat food anymore. Sam have stopped to eat and have consumed only blood for months. When he ate, it is just for pleasure or discover new flavors, with his senses upgraded. He can feel so much more than a human. And he is not human anymore, pretending to be one can work for a short period of time. But it's not reality. Accepting the change and using his abilities to their full capacity is the logical thing to do. His brothers and his sister seem to struggle to accept all of what they are. Cole wore a mask pretending to love it. But it is just a coping mechanism. Losing his magic was a terrible blow for him. Unleashing his bloodlust on every occasion is his way to release all his pent-up frustration and anger. Elijah, him, is always on his best behavior. But inside he is like the predator. Nichols is still burdened by the murder of their mother, a fact knows by Sam, but not the rest of his family. Rebecca, Elijah and Klaus are very close to each other. On the other side Cole, Finn and Sam like to keep to themselves, particularly Sam and Cole. The two loving their freedom and independence. Sam's attention is grabbed by the voice of Elijah. It has to stop exclamation point. Between Nick and Jacola, father will notice our presence. We have to be careful, discretion is a priority if we want to escape him finish Elijah. His voice serious and strict. They act like children giving in to their basic instincts and being reckless. Exclaimed Finn, a flash of disgust appear in his eyes when thinking about the victims of Klaus and Cole. Oh, and what about Samuel? who know what he is doing when he disappears. Tell us, Sam, don't be shy. Say Cole with a playful smile. Sam understand immediately what he is trying to do. Divert the attention for escaping being reprimanded. I'm not quite sure to understand what you are insinuating, Cole. But I am not the one risking the exposure of a secret. The solution to our problem however is simple. We split up, Father can't purchase all of us at the same time. And it will be much harder for him to find us if we are not all in the same place. Say Sam with a calm voice. Offered this perfect opportunity to announce his departure. He continued. It's the best option. I'll leave. Finish Samuel spotting a look of sadness on Rebecca's face. I agree with Samuel. This is the smartest thing to do. I'll leave too. Add Finn. Yes, I agree with Finn and Sam. Count me in. We should leave tonight. Say Cole with an excited face. Are you so eager to abandon us, brother? Spat Klaus with anger and betrayal. After Elijah and Becca, Cole is the one with the deepest bond with him. Nick it's for the best, it won't be long before the peoples in this town discover our secret. Especially now that Lucian have become like us. Respond Elijah, attempting to dissolve the anger of Klaus. Then it is decided, we leave tomorrow when the sun goes down. Say Finn ending the discussion, while Cole mumble about leaving sooner. One day later, so it's time. Good luck to you three and be careful. Say with sadness, Rebecca. Stop being so emotional sister. We will see each other soon, Nick can't live without me. Say Cole recomforting Becca and taunting Klaus in the same phrase. Their goodbye said, they get on their horses. Oh revoir, say Samuel with a smile, before taking the road, followed by Finn and Cole on his sides. Six days later, in a thick forest full of animals and trees stand three men around a fire, a few meters further on the ground, dead bodies belonging to a group of hunters, there's neck having bites mark. Finn watch with disgust the blood dripping from the mouth of Cole. You really should feed if you want to be at full strength, Finn. Say Cole. He's right, we chose to go a separate way from here. You'll be alone, it's safer if you drink more blood. Add Sam. Finn gave them an angry look. Very well. Do what you wish. Exclaimed Cole with exasperation. The three get back on their horses and give their goodbyes. May we see each other brothers say Sam to Cole and Finn. Before he starts riding on his horse, Cole and Finn each riding in a different direction. 1013, Italy, Rome. Tell me, Benoit, what is God? Ask Samuel, in the last decade he didn't change physically at all. 
but he's more gracious, more elegant. God is everything, the beginning and the end, he is creation incarnate, the light in the dark. His compassion is unlimited, and his anger to destroy anything in his path. Answer confidently, Benoit, a gentle expression on his face. Why do you ask this question, Samuel? Asked Benoit, his eyebrows raised, listening attentively to the answer. I am simply curious to know your point of view on the question of God. Considering your position you should know him well. Respond Sam with amusement. Personally, I think that there is no God, and if there is one, then this being certainly isn't preoccupied by us. No, I think that we are God in a much smaller scale, but the progress is unstoppable. Capable of creation and destruction, only limited by our fear, our morality and our lack of foresight. Revealed Sam to Benoit, who stand up, his face distorted by fury. Blasphemy exclamation point are you possessed to even think of these words, say Benoit, almost screaming. Will you control yourself? This is a pathetic show of your numerable flaws. Reply Sam moving so fast, he seemed to disappear and reappear in front of Benoit. After observing closely his face for a few seconds, Sam established eye contact. Forget everything related to me. Say Sam will compelling Benoit to forget. Using his speed, he gets out of the magnificent church and disappear in the street of Rome. Back in his comfortable house, Sam contemplated the answer he received from Benoit. I can only hope the next pope is more interesting and open to philosophical debate. Teofilato is a disappointment. Say Sam will thinking out loud. 1049, England. On a mountain and surrounded by large plains, a castle stood proudly and in very good state. Inside the castle there is a library, the favorite place of Sam, if we don't take in consideration his laboratory, where he experimented on the reaction of different materials, when in contact with others, a practice called alchemy or the new term chemistry. Inside the library, bookshelves filled with scrolls, books of all kind, but mostly with the books on sciences he bought at a high price. A bookshelf in particular is containing only spell books, grimoires and other works on magic. His reading combined with his experiments push his knowledge of magic at a higher level than his mother Esther. Probably on par with Kitsia, if not above her. His advance in his studies of sciences and magic lead too made him realize the connection between the two. While numerous rules still escape his perception, in a few centuries he will have discovered a number of them. The complexity of magic require time to understand it in its entirety, so it is not surprising. He doubts anyone except him made this discovery. The witches being too much focused on their beliefs and preconceived ideas to push the boundaries. He developed two theories on magic and its source. The first one colon, magic or cosmic energy, is inextricably linked to the universe. It is a part of it. But it could also be the surplus of energy generated by the universe. It could have been released in the very first moment of existence of the universe. The second colon, reality or the fabric of the universe is written in a sort of code, a language invisible. But all around us, magic would only be the manipulation of this code to rewrite reality. To obtain the intended result the rules must be followed. Or terrible consequences are to be expected. Cause and effect. Of course, it is only theories. For now he can't prove either of the two. More knowledge is needed. Sam will stop twirling his glass of blood and finish it in one go. Standing up, he made a hand gesture and the stake that was put on the shelf fly to his hand. Inspecting it, Sam can feel the magic inside, an indescribable gleam pass in his black eyes. This imperfection need to be fixed. I want to see all, to witness everything, to know all there is to know. Echoes the voice of Samuel in the library. It was said with an unnerving calmness. But a tremendous ambition is hidden in the meaning. 1078 New World, native village of the Mickelson. Unbeknownst to all the locals, a predator is among them, a being who do not operate under any law or belief in right or wrong. Cold, calculating eyes scan and analyze everything around. Tonight is the night, so many years of time dedicated to this objective. Sam will see a woman a little bit more appetizing than the rest, he follows her and grab her. Do not make a sound. He compels her, bite her neck and start drinking her blood. When he hunts he sometimes plays a little with his meal. But tonight his mind is cold, unfeeling, an indifference total about everything and everyone except himself. Only his will to follow the plan exist. At first glance it looks like his usual self. But right now for what he is about to do in 2 hours and 4 minutes, he had to use extreme measure to ensure the success. 55 minutes later, in a clearing, Samuel drew complex figures geometric and symbols on the ground. Behind him 36 poor souls being in a coma state induced by magic. Finishing the last triangle, Sam disposed the lives he prepared for this instant each at a precise point, creating a perfect harmony with the drawings. In the center the stake of white oak is in a container full of the blood of a Depelgenger, a special blood very hard to acquire. Multiples locator spells were needed, he found a double. But his surprise it was a man, he'll have to research who is the original. Standing in the center beside the stake, Sam will wait for the last piece of the puzzle. Nine minutes later, looking up, Sam watches the last piece reveal itself to him. Without wasting a second, he starts casting the spell. Meanwhile in the sky, if you know what you're looking at, you could only describe it as breathtaking and a testimony to the immensity of the universe. An alignment of planets, hide in part by a partial eclipse, the power furnished by the celestial event, make all the drawings shine with an eerie light. Sam will start the hardest part of the ritual. The energy he had to manipulate is enormous. It is only possible by his capacity of siphoner, 
and his impressive control over magic. Altus at Gobitus. Begin Sam. Integrum progresses. While he continues the spell, the energy of the 36 souls begin to rise in the air. Loony Virtue. The 12 werewolves are drained of their powers, pure energy due to their young age. Rush to the stake and empower it, the blood starting to get absorbed by it. Virtutus Solaris. The energy just as pure of the twelve vampires rush at the stake, the container is now almost empty of blood. The stake begins to glow, and a large quantity of energy is sucked inside, the color of the stake changing to red. Univisi Potestatus, twelve witches with a very high aptitude for magic, suffer the same fate. Their energy used to nourish the stake a last time, making it overflowing with power, and totally fused with the magical blood of Depelgenja. A turn of Olvum, casting the last part of the spell Samuel, let out a tired sigh, the difficulty was enormous. The mental strain simply horrible, channeling so much energy and keeping control of it require an immortal body. If a mortal were to attempt, he would disintegrate instantly under the weight of so much power. Even Sam with his immortality was only able to do it, thanks to his ability to siphon magic, allowing him to cut in half the strain of the ritual. Walking toward the stake, his indifferent state of mind start to crack, the feeling of pure pride to have accomplished something this unique. He constructed the ritual alone, decades of hard work coming to reality. The patience needed and the will to realize his vision is inhumane. But as he indulges himself in his pride and happiness, another crack appears when he witnesses the consequences of playing God. 36 deaths, werewolves, witches and vampires. No older than 16 months, all of them looking like drained husk, emptied of life. He has transformed 12 innocents and pure being into something perverting human nature. He feels bile rise up, and his gag reflex activate, which within a vampire should be impossible. This is not the place or the time to be drowned by emotions exclamation point stay focused on the task. Say Samuel to himself closing and sealing the cracks returning to the indifference resulting of cutting himself from his emotions. The stake just in front of him. He takes it in his left hand, the feeling of the stake on his skin is incredible, it's pulsating in power. Looking at this object of beauty, Sam will aim it at his heart. There was no god. Chuckle, Sam with an unreadable look. He stabs himself in the heart and start to mummify, his body falling on the ground dead. An hour later, in the same clearing where used to be the home of the Mickelson, the first vampires came to life, now this ritual Sam will performed left a mark on this land. These two acts and all the previous powerful spells used here, changed this place in a fundamental way, making it a nexus, a place charged in big quantity of magic. At the center of the magic symbols, the body of Sam start twitching. Suddenly he wakes up and take a deep breath. After a moment to regain clarity, he stands up and walk out of the circle. Grabbing a bag made of leather, he takes out a jar full of blood and drinks all of it. For the next minutes he scrutinizes the changes brought by the ritual, his magic have increased a lot. Wanting to test it, Sam wave his right arm. Every trace of the ritual taking place burn up until it remains only ashes. As for the stake it was destroyed after he stabbed himself with it, the stake transferred its energy to him, and modified the immortality spell his mother put on him, the stake simply evaporates when it lost all its power. Not wanting to stay any longer in case someone sensed the disturbance caused by the ritual, Sam will begin to run. However he never ran this fast, a hundred of meters parked in less time than it would have taken before. Riding his horse, Sam checked the improvements he received, his strength, speed, and all his vampiric powers, seem to have been sublimated. His reserve of magic have more than ever, but it'll take time to regain the level of control he had. What he gained is not negligible, like earlier. With a wave of his arm, and a strong intent it was enough to burn everything in the clearing. Touching the chest area where he stabbed himself, he hummed with satisfaction about the most important change. His immortality. His previous state had a mortal weakness to the white oak, but now he is truly immortal, even the sun no longer have an effect on him. His ritual also respected the rules of magic, is such nature except his new self as a part of reality. The balance was not broken, therefore no depelgenger of him will come to be. Four months later, Sam has already adapted to the changes, the unexpected one was an increase in mental abilities. He exhibits a form of minor telepathy he can hear thoughts, but he has to focus his attention on it completely. His hypnosis no longer need eye contact, if he is close enough and will it, he can compel anyone. For people under Vervain, it's a little bit harder, for werewolves and witches, it depends on the mental strengths. His strength speed reflexes like he had deducted was increased. His biggest fear were his emotions, after stabbing himself, he realized the change made to his personality. Some may say he evolved other that he lose a part of his soul. He preferred the first option if he had to chose. Before the ritual his body almost forced an instinctual reaction to the strong emotions he felt. But after the shame he felt, the disgust for the sacrifice he committed in his own name, were gone. Only the pride and happiness stayed. It seems the more you evolve, the more you feel detached from human convention and morality. This is the conclusion Samuel made. Prepare my carriage. I think a trip would be perfect too. Don't you? Order Sam to one of his servant. 1113, Italy. It's good to be back. Say Samuel dressed in noble's clothes made with the finest materials. He emits a scholarly but cold aura. His black eyes gained a layer of wisdom after living a more than a century. Good to being back too with your family. 
Respond Elijah happy to see his brother again. I mean in Italy, answer Sam. Like always, your sense of humor is too subtle to be perceived as anything other than sarcasm. Say playfully Elijah. The two walking and crossing several streets, the sun is hiding behind clouds, creating a strange atmosphere. So, more than two decades have passed since the last time we all saw each other, surely this time you'll stay with us. You are way more responsible than Cole and Nick, it will be pleasant to have the company of a mature brother. Tell Elijah. And Rebecca question mark, does she make you suffer too, poor Elijah? Asks Samuel. Ah, Rebecca is constantly searching to love, the fact that we can't have children is hard to accept for her. I think she just wants to feel human again answer Elijah with an undertone of sadness. It's logical, an immortal creature have no need to procreate. Procreation is nature answer to the short lifespan of humans. Adds Sam with a tearful expression on his face. Elijah observes the face of his brother before saying, There is something different about you, Samuel. But I'm not sure if that's a good thing. Admit Elijah. I suppose time will tell. Finish Sam. The rest of the path is made in silence. They stop at the entrance of a luxurious castle, large enough to house all the Mickelson. Hours later. Can we eat? I'm hungry. I didn't feed today. And I can't wait any longer. Say Cole like the gluttonous beast he is. You are an animal taking pleasure in drinking the blood of humans. All of you. Retort Finn with barely hidden disgust in his voice. Finn, don't act like you are better than us. Respond Klaus. Enough. Can we please spend a moment all together without it degenerating arguments? Thank you. Reason Elijah ignoring the laugh of Rebecca in the background. Taking their place, servants enter and slit their wrist, letting the blood flow in glasses. Sipping his glass of blood, Samuel listened to Rebecca speaking about the Five Hunter, and in particular about a certain Alexander. I'm telling you he is not a danger for us. Alexander would never suspect me, and he would not hurt me. Affirm Rebecca with firmness. You are foolish if you think he cares about you sister. Your effort to find love blind you and keep you from seeing the truth. Answer Klaus to the speech of Becca. Nichols. Interrupt Elijah to give a warning to Nick to stop antagonizing Rebecca. The rest of the evening continues without incidents and was an excellent moment. A year later, Italy. Samuel dodges slash, blocking a right hook he counterattacks with an open palm to the chest projecting the hunter against the wall. Twitching a finger, a cracking sound can be heard made by the neck of the hunter broken by telekinesis. The hunter hand letting a dagger fall on the floor. While he inspects the dagger, he feels a curse being placed on him. Taking a few minutes to analyze the situation, he concluded that killing a hunter of the five result in a curse placed on the killer. Fortunately, with his unique ability, he easily siphons the curse. Sam, hearing his brother Klaus screaming in anger, without wasting time, rushed to investigate. What he found is Nicholas, a sword in hands butchering the last four hunters and Rebecca sobbing on the bed. What did he promise you? You sided against your family. What did he promise you? Asked Klaus in rage because of the mistakes Becca made. After Rebecca explains to Klaus the story of the five, and their ultimate weapon a cure to immortality, the three of them take out the daggers of Cole and Elijah, but as they prepare to do the same for Finn. Wait, maybe we should let the dagger inside of him. Propose Nicholas. Finn is a pain in the ass, but even him doesn't deserve that. Retort angrily Cole. I agree with Cole this is a cruel thing to do. I don't think this is a good idea at all. Add Samuel. Nobody ask your opinion Sam, you barely spend time with us in the last century. You don't know how Finn is. Complaining about everything, hating his own existence and ours. Answer Klaus, a few seconds of silence followed before someone speak again. How long do you intend to let Finn like this, Nicholas? Ask Elijah with resignation. Seeing Klaus, Rebecca and Elijah have already taken the decision without listening to him or Cole. He stops trying to convince them. Sam also kept silent about the curse that activate when killing a member of the Brotherhood of the Five, not wanting to disclose his siphoner abilities. It is time to leave again. Think almost simultaneously Cole and Samuel. 1201 England County of Cambridge. It is going to be make seven years since Sam start visiting the School of Pythagore and attending its classes, advanced mathematics and physique being the most interesting for him. This year he started a new project, an institution purposefully made for education. Of course, he'll have to stay behind the scene, his immortality preventing him from staying too long in in the same place, if he interacts with the population, unless he compels everyone to ignore the strange things happening around him, he has to move from time to time. His musings are interrupted when his sense detects the smell of death, not hearing a heartbeat. He concludes that this is a vampire, one of the hundreds his family stupidly spawned, infesting the world with vampires. Entering a dark alley, Sam will use a spell, Invisibilia. Cast Sam using magic to make himself disappear from the vampire vision who just arrived in the alley and start looking around searching him frantically. Observing the vampire, Sam doesn't recognize him, reappearing behind him, he grab him in a choke hold, ready to break his neck. Who are you and why do you follow me? You have five seconds to answer. Ask authoritatively Samuel. Let go of me. Say with difficulty the vampire struggling to get free. It's meaningless. The gap between our strength is too large. You are like an ant in front of me. Two seconds remaining. Answer Sam strengthening his hold. All right, calm down. I want to know how you are doing it. You are a vampire like me. How do you go out in the day? Why are you not burned by the sun? Reveal the vampire afraid for his life. 
Oh, so it's just about that. Unfortunately, you don't need to know the answer to this question anymore. Say Samuel. What? What do you mean by that? Questioned the vampire, cursing himself to have followed this man. I am trying to build something here, and your presence could be a problem. Responds Sam with an almost regretful voice. Twisting his arm, the vampire fall on the ground dead. Leaving the alley, a quiet whisper can be heard. Can Cremo? Say Samuel in a low voice. The odor of smoke begins to fill the alley while he goes out. 1269, University of Cambridge. Students running everywhere eager to learn more. On the building the motto of the university is written, Omnibus S. Scientia. In a few centuries this place will already have created some of the most brilliant minds of the world. Note with satisfaction Samuel watching the students go about their business. His discoveries in sciences are slowed down by the lack of more efficient technology. He is in advance on his time, ironic considering his immortality. But on the other hand his study of magic advanced at a wonderful pace. The next step would be to combine the two field and unified science and magic. Samuel has already chose his next objective. To explore a mystery he still hasn't solved. What is really the other side? Eleven months later in Greece. Following clues and stories told by the descendants of Katsia, he discovered she was a native of Greece. But he also learned a piece of information that explained three important things. 1. Why she created the immortality spell. 2. For what purpose the Brotherhood of the Five exist. 3. Who created the cure for immortality. Katsia made the immortality spell, and for a reason that is unsurprising, love. She and a traveler named Silas fell in love and wanted to spend eternity together. But Silas duped her and become a mortal before the wedding. Mad with rage Katsia killed the woman she discovered he was truly in love with and trapped him in stone. The cure in his hand, after that she hid Silas body in a secret location. But her revenge didn't stop there. To separate the two lovers even in death she created the other side. The story tell that now dead, she patiently waits for him to take the cure and die, trapping the two together for eternity. Her descendants used a ritual to empower five's hunters, giving birth to the Brotherhood of the Five. Their purpose is to force Silas to take the cure and die. The five hunters Samuel met, ignored their real mission, and thought their purpose was to eradicate the vampires. What exactly are we looking for sir? Ask a worker looking lost. I have no idea. Isn't it exciting? Answer Sam watching the workers search the area for artifacts. After hours looking, someone finds something. Lord Ruthven, we find something. Exclaim, a worker holding an object in his hand. Lord Ruthven alias Samuel Mickelson advance in direction of the worker and take the object in his hand. He used a fake name to dodge unwanted attention, the one of the Bennets in particular. They didn't appreciate him poking his nose in their business. Immediately he can feel the energy inside the object. The talisman itself is a piece of bone carved in a square shape. Good, I'll look at this attentively later. Keep searching. Say Sam. A few minutes later he leaves the quarry and decide to go back to Athene tomorrow. Weeks later. Finally, weeks of research come to fruition. The secret of the creation of the other side by Katsia. Did she realize what she accomplished? Ask himself Sam. She created an entire dimension and stabilized it. She links this dimension to our reality. And it has existed for more than 1000 years. So she must have bound it to something that could exist just as long. For the internal working. They anchor an immortal or an indestructible object to catch the consciousness or what some call soul that is released after death, and send it to the other side. Sam immediately made the connection with Silas. The male Depelgenger he used in his ritual was probably the double of Silas. Maybe the female Depelgenger are the ones of his true love who became immortal with him. After all, Katsia made two of immortality, and she didn't take it one. Finally, she programmed the dimension to only take supernatural beings. The destination of the dead humans is still unclear. But maybe other dimensions exist and function like the afterlife. Samuel's favorite theory on the subject is that the dimension or dimensions if there are more, trap the energy of the consciousness in them. If the souls were to escape or be released everything they are will go back to the universe and reunite with it. With the help of the talisman, he managed to locate the Grimoire of Katsia, a wealth of knowledge belonging to one of the strongest witches. However, complications start to present themselves. The first problem, the Grimoire is in the possession of the Bennet. The second problem, only the blood willingly given by a descendant of Katsia, a Bennet can unlock the pages. The task will be difficult, true he can't die, but a coven of powerful witches can still slow him down enough to escape with the price. A plan is needed, and he has the perfect one in mind. While his family spawned dozens of vampires because of boredom or affection, Sam until today has only created 10 vampires, but only for experimental purpose. He killed 9 of the subjects, and let one alive to observe how he would fare in the world. His offsprings are different from other vampires. They are like the creator Samuel immune to the sun, and to wood vervain only stop them from compelling humans. That doesn't hurt them physically. The vampires his family created inherit their weakness to wood. Their kind is vulnerable to all types of wood, while the originals of them are only affected by the white oak tree. However, the vampires die and as Sam call them, can only be killed by decapitation. Having their heart removed will also kill them definitely. It seems Leif Erikson will finally be useful. 1271 Mickelson's Birth Village you wanted to see me, my lord. Say the only vampire dying in existence. You still haven't learned to perfectly hide your emotions. I can clearly see your desire to kill me. Remarked Samuel with amusement. Despite all the things you've done to me, I still kept my humanity. I don't know if it's a curse or a blessing. But at least I'm not like you. Answer Leaf. 
Don't be a hypocrite, you were one of the three volunteer for the transformation. Say Sam with annoyance. I never wanted to be at your service, and I absolutely never wanted to become a monster feeding on the blood of innocent peoples. Respond angrily Leaf. Enough. You should know me enough to know that I would never let you roam the world, if you could hurt me or act against me. But I have a task for you. Accomplish what is asked of you, and you will gain your freedom, propose Samuel. Leaf takes a few seconds to consider it. Very well. I will do this last task, but I want to be free of you. Except the vampire Diane. Listen attentively Sam will explain what he awaits from him. After every detail is planned, Leaf leave to accomplish his task, but before he opens the door, Sam interrupt him. And Leaf, don't project your guilt on me, you could have feed from animals. I never forced you to kill. Your precious humanity is only a silly idea. In reality the more control you have over your emotions, the closer you are to humanity. By letting your emotions and instincts rules you and affect all your decisions, you are more like a savage animal. Finish Samuel, while Leaf leave the room gritting his teeth. Four months later, Leaf is running with all the strength he can gather, his body is riddled with wounds, regenerating faster than normal, but slower than a Dian is capable of. Finally, after hours of running through the woods, he sees a hut. Rushing to the door, he knocks vigorously on it. The door open revealing Sam. You're here. I had doubts about you getting it out of the coven in one piece. But you seem fine, or at least with all your limbs. Come in, don't stay outside Leaf. Say Sam. Sit down and tell me everything from the beginning. Continue, Samuel giving a glass of blood to Leaf and sipping on his own. The two sit on the chairs and Leaf start telling what happened. The plan worked exactly like you wanted. I lied and tell a story about being on the run from a violent and cruel vampire. I explained to the witches that the vampire transformed me for torturing for eternity. There were a few hiccups, like my immunity to the sun. They almost discover it. But Lucinda made me a daylight ring that allow me to have a cover. Tell Leaf. Lucinda. Ask Samuel with curiosity. It's no one, just a witch that was there. Answer Leaf with haste, but the grief-stricken face didn't escape Sam's eyes. Don't stop, tell me the rest. Say Samuel. A month later I start to gain a little bit of their trust, I protected them, and in exchange, they gave me their blood. I had already achieved the first objective at this point, but I had no idea where was the Grimoire. But I discovered its location. Continues Leaf. How question mark how did you discover where it was hidden? Interrupts Sam. It doesn't matter, what does is that I find it. Respond Leaf trying to avoid the subject. Don't be shy, tell me. Sam compel him. Lucinda, she and I, we got close. We started to share our secrets in one night. We were having a drink made of a strange mixture of plants. She inadvertently talks about the Grimoire. Answer, Leaf having no other choice. I didn't act immediately. In your instructions you said to wait for an opportunity. So I waited and waited. But last night a large group of humans attacked the camp. This is when I acted. This was probably the only chance I had, and so I took it. Finish Leaf. You did an excellent work Leaf. Now give me the blood and the Grimoire. Request Samuel calmly. Leaf gets a vial of blood out of his satchel and give it to Sam. And the Grimoire. Ask patiently Sam. You think I'm stupid. I hide it. And I will not tell you where until I'm very far away from you. Respond smugly Leaf. Leaf, your naivety is a disappointment. I knew you would do that. But I was thinking you would be smarter about it. Maybe you overestimate yourself or underestimate me. But in both cases you made a mistake. Say Samuel before compelling Leaf to not move from his chair. Approaching him, Sam put his hands on the head of Leaf and start to use his minor telepathy to extract the information out of his head. He succeeded and find the information he was looking for after long minutes, terribly painful for Leaf. Before Sam or Leaf can say anything, someone knocking on the door is heard. Enter, exclaimed Samuel. A tall and healthy man enter. Lord Ruthven, the few witches that survived have run away. Do we purchase them? Question mark report respectfully to the man. Let them be, it will be a shame if a family line of witches as powerful were to be exterminated. I want you to go find a tree at 130 meters in direction of the river. At the base of the tree is buried a book, bring it back to me. Order Samuel. The man follows the order and get out. I should have known. The attack, my attempt to hide the Grimler. You planned everything from the beginning to the end. Say Leaf with a little bit of awe in his voice. A perfect plan doesn't mean having everything go within expectations. A perfect plan is achieved when it has the flexibility needed to deal with troubles. Explain wisely Samuel. Leaf listening to the words of his maker. What are you going to do with me? Ask Leaf. In order to measure a person's worth, you must do more than push them. Say Sam ignoring Leaf. You showed all your worth, and even if you are my creation, you are fine lacking. Finish Sam having taken his decision. Please, you don't have to do this. I don't want to die. I'm begging you. Beg Leaf, tears falling on his cheeks. Goodbye, Leaf Erickson, adventurer and explorator. My first creation, the first vampire dying that came to existence. Say Samuel, before slapping the head of Leaf, decapitating him and killing him instantly, a tinge of sadness in his eyes, disappearing as fast as it came. Not staying any longer than necessary. Sam go get his prize and erase the last witnesses of his presence and involvement in this tragic event. 1322, France. Samuel contacts in France informed him that two warlocks are looking for an artifact, more precisely a knife. If the legend is true, the knife had the power to end or save the world. Sam seriously doubts the veracity of the legend. The knife may have magical properties. 
but enough to save or destroy the world is very unlikely. Having nothing to do for the time he chooses to investigate, maybe he'll find something interesting. He tracked them to a small town surrounded by forests. After interrogating the locals he learned from an old woman, that in the wood a mysterious creature is guarding a knife killing anyone trying to obtain it. The two orcs probably followed this lead, so he followed it too. Arriving at the place the first thing he notices is the smell of blood, on the ground two dead men, their bodies looking to be mutilated by claw mark. A few meters away there is an altar, on the altar the knife reflect the light of the moon. Sam looks around him, the warlocks must have tried to take the knife, but were killed by the guardian. Not seeing any guardian he approaches the knife as he is about to touch it. He hears a noise, trusting his hearing he bends down, dodging a vicious strike. Repellent, cast Samuel, projecting his aggressor away. Turning around he found himself face to face with a strange creature with a skin looking like stone. Wanting to test its physical prowess, he engages it in a hand-to-hand -hand fight. Blocking an attack on his left side, he takes his distance with the creature, having seen what he wanted. Novum Resolutions. Use Samuel, the spell, immobilizing totally the stone skin creature. Approaching it, he put his hand on its chest area. Core, Mortem. Whisper Samuel stopping its heart and killing it. Observing the new being he discover, he can't help but think about all the doors this open. He thought only human or derivation of humans like werewolves existed, but this is something entirely different. An excited smile appears on his face returning his attention on the knife he tries to take it in his hand, but a force field rejects him. He siphons the force field energy and try again, but the handle of the knife start to burn his hand. He then wraps it in a cloth and put it in his bag, casting an illusion spell on the dead body. He lifts it to carry it. 1379, England, University of Cambridge. The last century he studied the grimoire of Kitsia and the others he stole from the Bennett. Kitsia's grimoire was the hardest to decipher, written in ancient language he didn't speak or know. It takes him a long time to understand the grimoire. While he didn't learn much from the Bennett's grimoire, the one of Kitsia contained the spell used for making the other side. Her own experience and tips is written in it, valuable information are also in it, for example, he learned that the werewolves are the result of a powerful curse. But what interested him the most was the spell that permit the creation of a dimension. He theorized that there are two options to make one. The first one, using an indestructible object or person and two, having enough power to create one without anchor. It is possible others ways can use, but he doesn't know them for now. In parallel to that, he made his research on the strange creature he found in France. He found multiple stories about this type of creature, it is apparently called a gargoyle. Its skin is much tougher than humans, its inside too work differently, new organs and missing some the humans possess. He learned everything he could about it. Using his contacts in the world, he spread the word to be on the lookout for unique creatures, and if one is seen to report to him. After achieving this, Sam will realize he needs eyes and ears everywhere to not miss anything as important. It's now time to lay the foundation of his new organization. If there is one thing Sam understood in the last three centuries, is that information, material power and political influence are very useful tools. But he will have to be very careful when selecting who will be part of his organization. The gift of immortality is precious after all. The purpose, creating a spider web on a globe scale, having one member or more in the biggest cities and places of interest, allowing him to know what happened, where it happens and when, giving him a considerable advantage. His organization could also help him with experiments and scientific discoveries. 1463, England. Around a table, in a castle affordable only for nobles, three brothers can be seen chatting and drinking glasses full of a red liquid. Elijah, Nicholas and Sam will catch up and talk about what happened over the years they spent separate, but quickly the discussion escalates. So for you, the answer to a brother's and sister desire for freedom, is to dagger them. Ask Sam not understanding the reasoning of Klaus. And you Sam will you decide to care now. You visit us one or two times in a decade if we are lucky, and you allow yourself to judge us. I am only doing this to protect them from themselves. Respond Klaus with a heard expression, but a voice full of anger. They are adults more than a hundred years old. They don't need protection, they can protect themselves. Elijah you understand what I'm saying. You are not stupid, letting us siblings in a coma state with a dagger in their heart is not the solution. Say Sam will trying to convince Elijah to see the reality of the situation. We can easily avoid father when Cole is not free and on the loose, and Finfin fin hate being a vampire. And Klaus will free them soon, he assured it to me. Answer Elijah without mentioning Rebecca and making an unreadable face. Escape father. You really haven't evolved, you still are terrified children's. Running will solve nothing. You want to survive, you want to live, then fight for it. Have you experienced nothing all these centuries, the both of you, to stay so afraid and powerless? Add Samuel cutting deep into Elijah and Klaus. Nick grabbed the dagger he hid under his chair and rushed to Sam using his vampire speed. Samuel reflex kick in, and he stops the arm of Klaus, the dagger a few centimeters from his skin. Twisting Klaus' arm he breaks it and stand up, he uses his supernatural speed, and break the neck of Nick. You are not better than him, moreover you are naive if you think he won't put a dagger in you too. Say Sam, grabbing his coat and walking toward the door. Goodbye brother. I think we will not see each other for a long time. Finish Samuel before disappearing in the night. 1500 Italy, Venice. 
Samuel and his friend watch the peoples live their life without care, unaware of the futility of their lives. When you are immortal, life lost some of its intensity, you are almost living outside of time, and the more knowledge and life experiences you acquire, the more you feel detached from the rest. I refuse your offer, again as tempting as it is. I don't think it's for me. That may be pleasurable in its own way. But unfortunately I don't want to live forever, my friend, answer Sam's friend. You really are a surprising man Leonard, you and I are a lot alike, we constantly search for deeper knowledge. Don't you think? Ask curiously Samuel. I am indeed a pursuer of knowledge, but I want to live and die, like it is meant to be. But you, you have the determination and all the time to explore the mysteries of the universe, Samuel. Respond Leonard with a smile. If you came back from the dead, come to me and tell me what you saw. Chao Signa Da Vinci, concluded Sam, leaving a man he respects enough to not enforce his will on him, and transform him in a dying against his choice. What a loss, thinks Samuel. 1604, unknown location. In an undisclosed place, 12 men and women are sitting around a table. The room is dark enough that the faces of the 12 persons are indistinguishable in details. The 112 meeting of the Dirum de Terra can begin. But first identify yourself. Say December. September. A woman's voice says. January. Says a man. The rest continues, March, April, June, August, February, May, July, November, October, all the 12 members have the code name of a month. March start your report on your findings. Begin December. In my territory, rumors of a giant spider preying on people circulate. I sent three of my oldest vampires dying to assess the situation, and only one came back. He describes a giant black spider capable of speaking and having acid saliva. That's all. Report March. My turn. The Pope Alexandra Vi want to start a crusade against the Turk. No monsters for me, only the regular politics. I warn you, Rome is a dangerous den of snakes. Says July. Hours of discussion and important decisions taken, everyone stand up and start to leave. Leaving only December alone. Finishing his glass of blood he put it on the table. Standing up and approaching a candle he lighted up with a look revealing Samuel hypnotic black eyes. In only two centuries and some decades, the organization he created developed at a remarkable speed. The foundation are strong, extremely strong. Their hands are everywhere, medicine, engineering, arts, architecture and others' domains. All of this giving him enough materialistic power to make alliances and gain political weight. The next step is to consolidate the power of his organization, while staying behind the curtain, taking the control of the authorities. Could also be very useful, but it will have to wait for the future. 1657, Italy. In the last decade Samuel met a lot of peoples, scientists, like Antoni van Leeuwenhoek who invented something extraordinary called the microscope, or Galileo Galilei a physician and astronomer. He also debated with the most notorious philosopher. Descartes, Spinoza, his studies of magic slow down a lot, he hit a block road. But on the contrary sciences keep advancing waiting for no one. So he concentrated on this part but also on experiencing new things. Discussing with intelligent men and women, he has obtained an impressive wisdom. Six centuries spent in roaming the world, and learning taught him a lot. In recent years he started to feel old, almost ancient, his indifference toward mortal keep growing. After witnessing history repeat itself, the birth of new empires and their destruction, after observing the cycle of life in action, and the ascension of the humans toward unknown heights, you start to see the bigger picture. And when you see it, you realize that there is no purpose to our existence except evolving. There is no good or bad, darkness or light, only an endless process of evolution, to what end he doesn't know. Stopping his inner thoughts, Sam will focus and appreciate the painting he received at the death of his late friend Leonard. The name of the painting Ordinate Chaos, if he wanted to describe it he couldn't. 1732, France, Paris. The age of enlightenment they call it here in France. Great progress made in sciences and arts. The universities have never been so full. The world is changing at a very fast pace, and it's imperative to keep up with it. Sam will have begun to help the technological advancements by publishing some of his theories and results of experiences, and offering funds to certain parties. In a few days, the 212th session of the Dirum de Terra meeting will start. The organization solidified its power and integrate itself even more in the society. The 12 first members control the world in the shadows. Of course, a few leaks escape outside, but nobody know the true influence of his organization. Rumors about dark hands behind the curtain circulate around, but not a lot of peoples believe it. Days later, unknown location. Good, we're all here. June, tell me what you find out about the golem I asked you about. Say December alias Samuel. Well, I didn't find the golem, but after some digging in the supernatural community, I heard that a vampire, a werewolf and a witch created a golem capable of absorbing supernatural beings, except for the species that created it. After absorbing the creature, it erases the memories from the collective conscious. They named it Malavaransa June. Excellent. Did any of you get your memories back? Asks December, a series of no is the reply. You probably don't have the mental strength to counter the memories erasing part. Thinks out loud, December. The rest of the meeting continues normally. 
They talked about everything they thought significant, and exchanged useful information. 1826, America Washington. John Adams, the successor of George Washington, Samuel, charged April to get close to him, and gain direct access to the White House, the seat of power of the American government. As he walks the streets of Washington, the sky free of clouds, Sam noticed a familiar face in the crowd. His father the infamous destroyer, who gained his reputation by burning villages to the ground and leaving a trail of corpses. He had a second nickname, the Vampire Hunter of Vampires. It was earned by only feeding on the blood of vampires. When his father sees his face, a look of recognition appear in the eyes of Mikkel, followed by anger and betrayal. Samuel don't stop and keep walking, his father following behind him. Entering the theater, he takes his place on the private balcony, ordering a drink delicious for the lovers of blood. Few seconds later, Mikkel enter and sit on the chair next to him. Did you stop hiding, boy? All these centuries tracking the bastard and I saw you only a couple of times. You have always been the smartest, so I shouldn't be surprised. But here you are, say Mikkel with anger. Don't call me boy, it's insulting considering my age. And I was never hiding. We just operate in different ways. You are an instrument of destruction, you lack my precision and finesse, responds Samuel. Help me, this is not you or your siblings that I want, it's the bastard, he is an abomination we need to kill, adds Mikkel, trying to discreetly grab something inside his coat. You really hate him with all your being. It's ironic that he is the one resembling you the most, says Sam with a chuckle, casting a glance to Mikkel. This entire conflict is stupid and meaningless, Nikolaus is not responsible for the mistake of mother. But you, you are responsible for his emotional trauma, continues Samuel. It was interesting to speak with you, father, but I can only tolerate your company for so long. Finishes Samuel, making a movement with his hand he broke the neck of Mikkel with magic, and he fully grabbed the stake inside Mikkel's coat. Appreciating the play until its end he prepares to leave, but before leaving he inspects the stake, he recognizes the special wood immediately, white oak. Taking a decision, he put the stake back inside the coat pocket. His last interaction with his siblings or at least his brothers Elijah and Nicholas was not pleasant at all. Maybe a threat to their life will make them change. 1890, Boston. Reading Beyond Good and Evil wrote by a philosopher, Friedrich Nietzsche, he sips his drink. Sam will close the book and make the final preparations on his new project, a ritual less complicated than the one he used in the past, but just as important. He is immortal, truly immortal, but he is still dependent on blood. His resistance grew, he can keep functioning for 62 days without blood, but this is still a weakness. If he found himself in a situation preventing him from feeding, even his immortality won't stop the processes of mummification. After the researches and dissections he practiced on creatures, he discovered one particular reptilian creature who can sustain himself by absorbing magical energy. But something must be added. Something increasing its adaptability to different energies. The addition of this trait will mutate the ability, allowing it to absorb any kind of energy. With only his reserve of magic he could survive without a drop of blood. But it'll drain his reserve constantly, so absorbing exterior energies would be much more useful. Weeks later, Boston, Samuel's laboratory. Mixing the essence of the two creatures, Samuel obtain a ball of energy. Using this energy he draws symbols on the ground of the ritualistic chamber, and infuse the energy and a little bit of his own with it. He put the major organs on their emplacement on the drawings. Standing in the center, Sam takes a minute to fully concentrate. Mutationum harmonici, start Samuel. Fast rector accommodatio obtenere. Continue to cast Sam, the organs melting down and transferring their proprieties to him. Summer assimilatio. Finish Samuel ending the ritual. An hour later, the ritual worked perfectly. Sam tailored it for himself after all. But like the last one his siphon apart was essential. The ritual changes his siphoning ability to passively absorb energy, and to adapt to different type of it, absorbing energy can now be substituted for blood. His vampiric physiology also played a role. After the ritual he performed centuries ago, he became different in more than one way from the original's vampires. The spell his mother used to transform him and his family was programmed to make the body a living dead body. Dead but simulating the body functions as of alive. His ritual changed to this point, and his body became like frozen in time. He doesn't need to eat, to breathe blood keep him in pristine condition and in a perfect state. If someone without siphoning ability and his physiology were to use the ritual, the result would be self-implosion, another side effect could be physical mutations. But the person would have to first survive the constant absorption of energy. And without being a siphoner, it is impossible to regulate the quantity absorbed. An original could perhaps survive, but they'll develop one or more unwanted physical modifications. The last part he adds in the ritual is the ability to adapt to every type of energies. This is invaluable. The only downside is that it takes time to adapt. He achieved an almost perfect immortality. He can't be killed by any normal means. In fact, the only way for him to die is if the universe is destroyed. He said almost perfect because he is still connected to the universe. He is not even an entity existing above space and time. So before he can sever his bond with the universe, he still has to become better. But over the centuries, he advanced little by little toward his final goal. The leaps forward made in the fields of sciences lead him to a better understanding of magic. With a deeper understanding of magic, he categorizes the different spells into five tiers. Magic of tier 5. Spell with the lowest difficulty. They only affect a small area, can't kill, but can inflict pain or ease it. 
magic of tier 4, simple enchantment and basic manipulation of the elements, spells and curses for offensive and defense purpose, magic of tier 3, magic affecting a bigger area used for sealing and barriers, telekinesis, pyrokinesi and advanced manipulation of the elements, healing spells, Magic of Tier 2. Magic capable of transmuting something into another and changing the basic nature of organic and non-organic matter, like rituals. Extremely difficult without using a big source of energy. Magic of Tier 1. Dimensional magic. Magic affecting entire planets. Most advanced manipulation of the elements capable of manipulating weather. There is a hypothetical Tier 0, but no one has ever reached it. Tier 0. Galactic system scale magic. Manipulation of reality by willpower and thoughts on a solar system scale. Control of time and space in a located area. Basic 2. Advanced control over the fundamental forces of the universe. The capacity of creation and annihilation is the highest peak, surpassing every tier, including Tier 0. 1909. Washington, White House. Three of the most powerful men in America reunited around a drink for Theodore the President of the United States. It's a martini. Charles the Attorney General of the US takes a whiskey and Samuel drink an excellent wine. A wine with blood add in the recipe of course. Gentlemen, I would like to talk to you about an idea I had. Says seriously Sam. Oh, so you really want to do what we talk about together? Asks Charles with curiosity. Tell me more. If you two talk about it together considering the fact that you can't stand each other, it must really be interesting. Add Theodore with a devious smirk. If you insist. Responds Samuel with a cunning smile. Two hours later, outside the White House. You sell it to him. I can't believe it, you truly are a snake. This is exactly why I don't trust you. Says Charles, glaring at Sam. What are you talking about? I had to make him a donation and give him my support for the next election. If there is a snake, it should be him, responds Samuel. You didn't offer him enough for the kind of power he gave you today, interrupts Charles. The power he gave to us. You mean, you are after all the official founder of the new Bureau of Investigation. Goodbyes, Charles, give my greetings to Martha, says with amusement Sam. She'll probably hate you if she knew you, answers Charles. 1910, unknown location. We already discussed and voted on this. A conflict is what the world need. The world is slowing down, and a war is the perfect way to push it forward, says September. We all know your love for war, September, but even for you. A war of this magnitude is unnecessary, responds February. I have to side with September on this matter. The decision has already been taken, adds October. Silence. The decision has already been made, finishes December. Seven years later, World War, even Samuel who saw a lot of wars, note that humans' capacity for destruction can sometimes be truly shocking. Sam on these troubled times traveled around the world relaxing and indulging himself in his favorite activity learning. He also takes time to write and publish his numerous theories under fake names. He is and have always been a scientist. 1942, America, New York. World War II is as horrible and murderous, if not more than the first one. Millions of victims, civilians and military. But as the world burns, an ambition start to grow inside Samuel. On the Mount Everest, at the highest point, Sam watches the starry sky. His vision can see so much more than a human. He can see Mars, Jupiter and the moon. Appreciating this beautiful view, Samuel ask himself what it's like up there in space. 1951, Washington. The tensions between the United States and Russia present a perfect opportunity. The rivalry pushed the two countries to compete against each other in every domain. Samuel investments thrive in this period of unrest for his new ambition to push the boundaries of space exploration. He used his multiple contacts in the upper echelons of power to participated and accelerating the foundation of the spatial program. He gave funds discreetly to the spatial program of Russia and America with his fortune estimated in billions. It didn't ruin him, he also used the influence of his organization to make the governments invest in space conquest. 1957. Today is a day that will mark history, for the first time a man is going to the moon. Sergei Avdiev, the Russian astronaut aboard the Sputnik, is getting ready to land on the moon as we speak. All around the world TV presenters report the event. A majority of the global population is in front of their television, watching history being made. Hours later, I am informed right now that Sergei Avdiev lands successfully on the moon. We still don't know if he will get out of his ship, say the TV animator. Minutes later, ladies and gentlemen, humanity can be proud. For the first time in history, a man set a foot on the moon. This is his words. The power of Russia prevails once again and proved its super Superiority. Spatial conquest has only begun, but we will continue to pursue the stars, says Sergei from the moon. 1966, Washington. The boy has been renamed FBI. Sam built it based only on an idea. And now many years later it became an agency assuring the security of all the United States. The FBI also allows Samuel to have the perfect way to cover up the experimentation he makes all across the states. Space exploration is still the priority of the strongest countries in the world. Nobody expected Russia to go to the moon first. It had unforeseen consequences in response to America launch a mission inhabited with the purpose of finding water on the moon. The mission was a success. They find ice inside a crater. Three years ago, two new objectives were defined. Installing a base of operations on the moon and going to Mars. While the brilliant minds of the space program do their work, Semmel started to experiment on genetics 
the potential of genetic manipulation is enormous. If he masters it, he could control evolution. A constraint also appeared, the more the technologies advances, the more it becomes hard to hide his activities. Fortunately with the FBI he can easily bury and erase his tracks. The name of his organization also start to pop up this last century. Some people find clues about its existence. For now, no one give these conspiracy theories credit. But he will have to make a backup plan. If the Dirum de Terror is exposed. 1971, France, Paris. What do you mean he wants to give up the mission on Mars? Asked Samuel to the other person on the phone. Yesterday, two options were given to Nixon. Focus on Mars or on the space shuttle. He is in favor of the space shuttle. Responds the other person. I don't care about what Nixon want. Fix this. I want the objective to be Mars. End of the discussion. Finishes Sam. Noise coming from the bed can be heard. A sumptuous woman is waking up and stretching on the luxurious bed. What was it about? A velvet voice asks. Don't worry about that. It doesn't concern you. Answers Samuel dressing himself. So cold. After the night of passion we just had, you could be more gentle with me. Adds the woman. This was purely sexual. I admit that our bodies work very well together. But it doesn't mean that our relationship goes deeper than that. Explains Sam. Don't lie. I know you love me. How could anyone resist my charms? Responds the woman getting close to Samuel and encircling him with her arms, teasing him with her hands, and trying to excite him. Catherine, while it's true that you are the most intriguing Depelganger I have met, do not delude yourself. I appreciate your intelligence and your pragmatic way of thinking, but the fact that our sexual chemistry is so high is just a coincidence. Neither you nor I is looking for a lover relationship. Clarifies Sam while enjoying the hands of Catherine running on his torso. Hum. I love it when you say dirty things to me. Answers Catherine laying kisses on Samuel neck. Three hours later. You saved me. That night when I ran away thinking I was going to die. Why? Why did you turn me into a Diane? Asks seriously Catherine. When you lived as long as me, you start to slowly forget what you were like at the beginning. When I saw you, I saw a little bit of myself in you. Your burning desire to live, your desire to be free, and to be the only master of your fate. I wanted to see what you would do if I gave you the keys, Katarina, answers Sam. And am I satisfied your curiosity? Asks playfully Kat but still wanting to know. The only response she gets is a mysterious smile. Goodbye, Katarina, enjoy your time in Paris, says Samuel before leaving. 1977, America, New York. I can't tolerate this any longer. We have to eliminate them and soon. They are trying to take control of the city. The serial killer is them, explains January. I said that I agree. Calm down. The Sticks is not to be underestimated. They have old vampires. A few shouldn't be a problem for you. But we don't know how many there are, says Samuel. Then come with me. With you, I wouldn't have any problem in fixing it. I know that you and November are obsessed with sciences. But in the old days you partake in a few wars. Adds January with enthusiasm. Do you have a location? Patiently asks Sam. I do. Shall we December? Answers January. Tomorrow. Concludes Sam. One day later, 23H32. Two men walk stealthily toward a mansion, the base of the Strix. One of the men is wearing a very expensive tailored black suit, and the other wore something more casual. But he has a sword in his hand. A sword, really? Asks rhetorically Samuel. One hour later. A bloodbath, corpses decapitated, burned. Some with their heart rip out of their rib cage, other with missing limbs. You said they are old vampires. But they are like cattle waiting to be slaughter. Says January beheading a vampire with his sword simultaneously. They are 600 years old if I have to judge by their strength. It's considered quite old. Answers Samuel before taking out a gun and pointing it in the direction of January. He shot a bullet killing a vampire trying to attack January in the back. You talked about my sword. But you brought a gun, exclaims January looking with surprise the weapon. I like the design, and the bullets were made specially for vampires. Responds Sam while snapping his fingers, using telekinesis to break the neck of the last three vampires surrounding him. He shot a bullet in the heart of each vampire. Two hours later, January's house. We didn't get the leaders of the Strix. They weren't even there, says angrily January. At least they won't cause you troubles anymore, Paul. Put into perspective, Samuel. After discussing a little with January, Sam take his leave. 1991, Florida, Jacksonville. His experiments on genetics produced surprising results. He discovered a latent gene present in all humans, the witch's powers are the result of this latent gene being partially activated. His own gene is almost completely integrated with his DNA and activated. He still hasn't found a way to manipulate this gene, but he knows how to force the gene to wake up. The results are unpredictable. Sometimes it gives the ability of pyrokinesis, telekinesis or telepathy. The capacity to use all of them like the witches do requires the gene to be more active but he doesn't have the mean to do it. He also discovered that when monsters' DNA is added to humans, physical mutation like slit pupils or more prominent deformities appears. The conclusion is that the humans can't assimilate the DNA of monsters. But there are other ways to increase the physical capacities. Werewolves are a good example of successful physical mutations. The curse responsible for their mutation must have modified the role the gene play. A subject coming from a long line of witches and with a large quantity of magic would be perfect. Maybe a Depelganger would work, thinks Samuel. 2001, unknown location. The project is underway. A decade or two, 
and we will be ready to complete it. But it was you, June, who wanted this meeting. So what do you want to share? Asks December. I finally found Malava, explains June. Oh, after centuries you have at least find it. Adds sarcastically September. Don't start September. I didn't find it earlier because it has been destroyed and reduced to a black pit. A society named Triad Industries tried to keep it a secret, but one of my spy infiltrated Triad and gave me the information. Finishes June. The meeting continues for an hour before ending. 2002, Russia, Moscow. In a space museum in Moscow, Sam will reflect on the last exploits made in space exploration. The United States, Russia and China each have installed a small base on the moon for scientific purposes. A manned mission was launched on Mars this year. In a month they'll reach the planet and will try to land on it. This mission took more than 45 years to prepare. The difficulty is extremely high, almost impossible. It asked the collaboration of the three biggest power to accomplish this prowess of technology. The cost was in billions, and lives were lost to permit the advancement of the mission. It's the fourth time a ship is launched from Mars. The previous attempts all end with an explosion or another problem, provoking the death of the crew. The collaboration of the Russia, US and China allow good relationship to be built between them, reducing the tensions and mistrust established by the Cold War. Few months later, Mystic Fall. She's just a little girl, William. What we did, we had no right, we are not God, says a man with a voice full of anger and regrets. Grayson, there's only room for one God in this lab, and it's not yours, responds William alias Samuel. She's my daughter, and I don't want to inflict all of this on her any longer. I'm taking Vervain every day, and if you kill me I have taken precautions, answers Grayson taking a step back. If I wanted to kill you, I would have done it already. But we learned a lot thanks to her. I suppose I can let her enjoy her life like a normal little girl says Samuel taking a step toward Grayson. You would really accept that? Grayson asks with suspicion. Of course. I have others business to take care of, responds Sam. I hope I never see you again, William Bishop, says Grayson eagerly leaving. 2005, New York, Samuel's penthouse. Admiring the view of New York City at night, Sam will take a sip from his favorite wine and wait for his late visitor. A few minutes later, the elevator opens, a man wearing a dark suit walk confidently inside. Elijah, how good it is to see you, says sarcastically Sam. It wasn't easy to find your brother, like Klaus. You mastered the art of stealth, answers Elijah. Tell me what you want Elijah. I let you find me out of courtesy, but after what happened in New Orleans, I made it clear I didn't have any interest in seeing you or the others, says Sam. It's different this time, brother. I need your help to kill Nicholas, says Elijah. Tell me, what did he do to make you wish to kill him? For a millennium you stood by his side no matter what. I find your new desire strange, asks curiously Samuel. He did the unforgivable. He killed them Cole, Finn and Rebecca. He killed our siblings Samuel, explains Elijah with sadness. Samuel hearing what Elijah said let out a laugh. Why are you laughing? There is nothing amusing, asks Elijah. Nicholas would never do something like that. His idea of a family is perhaps unnatural and unhealthy. But he truly loves us in his own way, responds Sam. I don't think you realize what Klaus have become. He lost all of his humanity, adds Elijah. I won't help you Elijah. I don't want to be involved in another Mickelson's dramas, says Sam. Please reconsider it. I can't find him. He is constantly protected by cloaking spells, and your talents in magic could be extremely helpful, asks Elijah. Sam will take a minute to think. I won't help you, but I'll give you an advice. Stop trying to find Klaus, and focus on what he wants. Find it, and you'll find him, finishes Sam. Six months later, after a series of failures, the last one in 2002, the collaboration between China, the US and Russia resulted in a success. The Diodolus Vi and its crew land yesterday on Mars. What many thought is an impossible task happened, humanity reached Mars. First the moon and now Mars. The question on everyone mind is what will be next, and what will be the future implications. To answer these questions Dr. Michael Griffin the administrator of the NASA gave a press conference, says the TV animator. What humanity accomplished is extraordinary in the past going to space was a dream. Never our ancestors would have thought that one day a man would reach the moon. But today we have taken the first true step in space exploration. Mars will allow us to learn more about our solar system, said Michael Griffin. What are you planning to do now? Asked a journalist. We are considering different options, but for now nothing have been decided, answered Michael before he stopped responding to questions. Samuel watching this, can't keep a satisfied smile from appearing on his face. He invested a lot on this mission, he is a little jealous of astronauts, be the first one to see something, and walk on a land untouched by human or other life forms, must be a humbling experience. Sam stop his mind from wandering, and focus on the device he is making. The device function is to help in the creation of a dimension. If Sam will use only magical energy the dimension will be bound to the universe in an intricate way. Sam's goal is to create a dimension disconnected from all the other dimensions or realities. A dimension outside the universe and controllable only by him. He is still far from succeeding. The device only makes a small bubble. It lacks the power to complete the process and finish the creation of the dimension. Sam will have to channel all his magical power in the device who changed the nature of the energy and use it to create a dimension separated from the universe. 
But there is more than one problem, like the fact that the device can't entirely change the energy. About 27%, 34% of energy is lost. There is also the fact that you don't have enough energy to complete the process, especially with the loss of 34% of energy. The device still needs to be improved, but even if he completes the dimension, he still didn't find a way to bound himself to it. 2007, unknown location. January murder is a provocation, a declaration of war. We've let the Strix run around, because they sometimes can be useful to us. But now they are just a nuisance, says April. He was stupid and reckless, his love for battle caused us more troubles than the Strix ever did. Adds May. How could he even get killed? He is one of the oldest Dian, a normal vampire wouldn't have the strength to kill him, says August. He could have been taken by surprise, and by a group of old vampires. I heard the leaders of the Strix are at least 900 years old, explains November. So what is going to be our response to this attack? Asks April. We should eradicate them. We strike fast and hard at the same time, and we eliminate them, answers August. The problem is that we don't know the location of their leaders Tristan and Aurora de Martel. They could reconstruct the Strix if they are alive, adds May. If we kill the majority of them, their strength will be greatly reduced, and they won't be a problem for years, even if they rebuild Strix. Says September, other possibilities are exposed in the following minutes. It's time to vote, says December. Four months later, around the world, all the Strix undergo a raid, violent battles between two organizations operating in the shadow. The humans completely unaware don't know that tonight supernatural blood will be spill over the earth. Samuel in the comfortable luxury of one of his houses, work on the schematic of his device, without sparing a single thought to the massacre being committed on his order. 2008, Mystic Falls. Back in the clearing where it all began, Samuel draws similar symbols on the grounds. He placed a boundary spell early on the clearing, to keep anyone from coming and interfering with the ritual. Finishing the last drawing, he takes something out of his bag, a glass orb engraved with runes containing a massive amount of energy. While his organization the Dirum de Terra instigated the First World War for different reasons, Samuel saw an opportunity. A Nexus Vorti is created when a rare occurrence happens. The number of deaths and the scale of the war was enough to be considered a rare occurrence. He drew the energy generated and contained it in an object he made. He had to reinforce the glass orb with spells to allow it to contain indefinitely the energy. Taking another orb out of his bag, he remembers its creation. Like the other, this second Nexus 40 was generated by a very rare occurrence, the nuclear bomb. An act of destruction orchestrated by man without precedence in all mankind history. The power generated by this Nexus 40 is a lot more than the one of the First World War, due to the occurrence being extremely rare. For the drawings, Samuel used the blood of a Depelgenger, a blood more powerful than the one of the previous Depelgengers, after Sam experienced on the Donator. After arranging the two orbs on the symbols, Sam will look up and wait for the celestial event, a conjunction of planets, Mercury and Jupiter. Hero 2H47, channeling the energy from the celestial event, the two orbs and the magic rooted on the ground of this clearing, Sam will start the ritual. Corpus et mente, begins Sam, Spiritus Etonum, continues Sam will calmly even if the wind is rising and becoming violent, Anima Ligibus Solitus, a strange hum start to appear, discernible only by Sam will. He can almost hear the universe scream at him, and feel it fight him back for what he is doing. Sam don't stop and don't lose an ounce of concentration. Concentration. He ignores the hum that get louder and louder each passing seconds. Ascension of meme. Finishes Samuel. Immediately it's like a shockwave go through everything that exists, unknown to anyone but Sam. A horrible sound appears simultaneously with the shockwave, a shrill and distorted sound coming from everywhere. But before Samuel can ponder on it, hundreds of voice resonates in his head, objects around him start to levitate. Controlling himself Samuel block the voices, his experience and telepathy help him block the thoughts from entering his mind. Three months later, the ritual Samuel performed is an aberration, immortality isn't natural. But all the immortality spells used to this days had a fatal flaw. The body is immortal, but the consciousness or soul is not. The immortal body simply traps the soul inside and keep it from dying and rejoin with the universe. But in the end it will. What Samuel did is extend his immortality to his consciousness to become immortal in body and mind. When the universe dies Samuel won't die with it even if his body were to be destroyed to its last components, his mind, his spirit will survive. Sam theorizes that the scream he heard at the end of the ritual was the universe reacting to what Samuel achieved. What he did was so unlikely to happen that the Nexus Vort he created was too powerful to be contained or channeled. He gained others advantage thanks to the ritual. His mental abilities received a big upgrade. He already had minor telepathy. But now he can hear the thoughts of anyone within a radius of 4 kilometers. And the more he master his telepathy, the more the radius increase. His telekinesis also increases in power. He can now affect objects on a molecular level. But he can't control it perfectly. His processing capacity became faster. So fast that he can now predict multiple scenarios at the same time. 2009, unknown location. Are we going to replace January? Asks September. Do we really want someone to replace him? January knew a lot of secrets. His replacement would have to know them too. Adds April. While the rest talks, Sam will remember the death of January. Flashback. You put failsafe in our minds, in all of us. I wasn't sure until the last meeting of the Deer Room, but I had suspicions. That night when we attacked the Strix together, you point your gun in my direction. My instinctual reaction should have been to be on the defensive but nothing. I didn't even have a thought to defend myself from you. 
After that I began to have suspicions, but I had no proof only doubts, says January. And, what did you do? Asks curiously Samuel. I had to be sure, but I had to wait an opportunity. No one know where to find you. You are a ghost, but there is one moment where I knew you would be, answers January. The meetings of the Deerum de Terra, I suppose you tried to attack me or hurt me, and you realize you couldn't, interrupts Sam. I tried to poison you, with a mixture prepared by a powerful witch, but my body just locked itself and stopped answering to me. It wasn't until I renounced to the idea that my body was freed, says January with anger, his body tensing in preparation. So you discovered I put failsafes in you and the other members. What are you going to do with this information? Asks calmly Samuel. My first idea was to warn the others to return them against you, but you also put a failsafe for this. I couldn't talk about it. I couldn't write about. So I reached the only possible conclusion. I have to kill you, responds January taking out a stake from his jacket. I train my mind to resist your compulsion. I am free, and I have the weapon to kill you. While you are different from the others, you still are an original, and this stake is made of white oak, says January before using his vampire dying speed to rush to Samuel. God hold the cards, says Sam. The phrase forced January to stop. How? I have control over my mind, your fail safe shouldn't work, exclaims January stuck in his position and paralyzed. You remind me of someone, his name was Leaf, like you, he failed, and his rebellion was punished. Like you, he always underestimated the others, says Samuel losing himself in memories. But unlike you, he had the excuse of being young. How disappointing you are. But I have to admit you surprise me a little. I thought November will be the one to discover the security measures I have taken. Adds Samuel. Plunging his hand in January's chest, he grabs his heart. The white oak wouldn't have killed me. Goodbye Paul. Says Samuel just before ripping the heart of January. Observing the corpse, he let out a sigh. The Strix is becoming annoying. Maybe it's time to teach them a lesson. Think out loud. Sam. Flashback end. December is brought back to reality by August. There is Slater. He's a knowledgeable person. And his purpose is to learn as much as he can. He's an interesting candidate. Proposes August. He's too young. He isn't even 200 years old. Says May. We were younger when we start this organization. Adds October. He worked for us a few times. And he did a good work. But we don't know him enough to make him join our circle. Says July. We wait and keep an eye on him. We'll take the decision at a later date. Finishes December. 2009. Washington. Samuel works on his devices interrupted by an alert on his computer. Reading the news. Sam is surprised to learn the death of Grayson Gilbert. He also learns that Grayson's daughter survived. He gave his word he'll let her live her life. But now she's older, and it won't be long before Klaus find her. While he experimented on her, it didn't change the fact that she's still a Depelgenger. And, like all the other Depelgengers, she will always attract danger. She is his most successful experiment on the gene. As a little girl she could use pyrokinesis and telekinesis at a high level. But a strong emotional stimulation was needed. Fear being the one letting her use her capacities to their fullest but making her lacking any control on her power. Who know what she can do now as a young woman, thinks Samuel, his interest growing each passing minutes. Four months later, tell me in details what happened in Mystic Falls, asks Samuel. The brothers Salvador came back, Stefan is dating Elena Gilbert Damon. I don't know what he is planning, but he had two or three altercations with the Bennett Witch, reports Slater. You did an excellent work Slater, but I send you to discreetly observe Elena Gilbert. So what did you found? Interrupts Sam. I discovered that there was a series of accidents surrounding her. Fire starting without reasons, objects being projected in the air and more. But nothing official, her father made sure to never let these incidents become public, answers Slater. Slater finishes report on Elena and what happened in Mystic Falls. Three weeks later, the vampires trapped are free. They kidnapped Stefan. What should I do? Asks Slater. Don't interfere in any way. Keep your distance and observe. Answers Samuel before hanging up. Finally, alone. The head of your coven would be better. But the Geminis know how to protect themselves. I hope you have the information I'm looking for. Says Samuel to the Geminis which he captured. I won't tell anything. I am loyal to my coven. I won't betray them. Responds the captive trying to break free from the constraints. Don't be stupid. One way or another I will get the information. But if I have to extract it from your head you'll suffer. Spare yourself the pain. And give me what I want. Samuel threatens the witch. We heard of you Samuel Mickelson. You are maybe more disciplined and discreet than your siblings. But you are just like them if not worst. Provokes the witch. So you want to do this the hard way. Very well. Answers Sam. Using his telepathy he enters the mind of his prisoner and watches her memories. He encounters a small resistance. But with his mastery of telepathy. He broke them easily. Here. Yes, this is it, says Samuel watching a particular memory. In the memory he watches the Gemini's coven head reveal the secret to his most trusted witches and warlocks. A group of siphoner transformed to vampire have been sent to a prison world. A perfect reproduction of the world, but void of peoples and stuck on the same day forever. A century ago he heard rumors about a coven that produced siphoners. In his 1000 years of existence, he never met someone like him, a siphoner. So he tried to find these siphoners. 
But he never did. It was like they just disappear from the face of the earth. The only clue was the Gemini's coven. But even with the help of his contacts, he couldn't find them. It wasn't until May 1994 that he managed to find them. A young man massacre a part of his family. Malachi Parker the killer was never caught. This sordid story unfolded in Portland. After that, it was only a matter of time before he found the Gemini's location. I have to thank you. This information escapes my grasp for a long time. But today you gave me the answer to my questions. The least I can do is offer you a beautiful death, says Samuel. He manipulates the mind of his prisoner to make her see her happiest dream. He snapped his finger, her neck broke instantly, and with a wave of his hand, the prisoner's body start to disintegrate. Leaving the dark room, Samuel think about the productive interrogation he conducted. He only need two things to enter the prison world containing the heretics, the ascendant corresponding to the prison world, and the blood of a Bennett witch. In the past he obtained Bennett's blood, but he used all of it. Fortunately he knows exactly where he can find more of it. Two hours later, I am sorry to bother you again sir. But the situation somehow degenerated and end with the girl, Elena, fighting a vampire. During the altercation she consciously used her power, she throws the vampire against the tree, impaling him in the process. I think she used telekinesis. In all the previous cases she never used her powers consciously. I don't know how, but this time it was different, says Slater on the phone. Interesting, very interesting, answers Samuel while he takes notes in his notebook. What I'm supposed to do now? It was a simple mission of observation, it's why I accepted it, asks Slater. Nothing have changed, your mission stays the same. Don't involve yourself and you'll don't have any problems, responds Sam. After a few minutes Samuel end the call. Two months later, unknown location, the project entered phase two. Learning to use CRISPR will accelerate the advancement of the project. Does anyone have something important to say? Asks December. Mars infrastructures are almost ready to welcome 10 persons. Do we send someone of our choosing? Asks June. And to do what? For now Mars is only important for the possible scientific discoveries. Your obsession for money won't be useful up there. Explains August. For now. Says quietly June. I side with August. Adds April. Where is Slater? I know we voted to not replace January seat. But did we agree to make him disappear? Asks March changing the subject. I entrusted him with a mission. Responds December. Oh, why? Interrupts November. I am merely satisfying my curiosity. Answers December without telling more. The session continues for an hour before ending. Samuel observed the others during the whole meeting and noticed that no one seemed suspicious about January death. 2010, Mystic Falls. Samuel looked at his place of birth. It changed so much that he can't even remember where was his family's hut. He received a call a couple of weeks ago. Elijah said to him that he finally found a way to approach Nicholas. Elijah also explains that Catherine was here and trapped in the tomb where the vampires were imprisoned. At the tomb, under the Fells Church, Samuel moved the rock blocking the entrance of the tomb. You managed to get trapped in the place you were supposed to be trapped the last century. It is almost poetic, says Samuel. Coming out of the dark, Catherine appears. Looking in a bad state, Samuel take out a blood bag and throw it to Catherine. She grab it, tore it open and drink the blood. She starts to regain color and her strength. Could you stop enjoying the poetic aspect and help me? Asks Catherine. Why should I? You're in there by your own design. You should get out by yourself. Answers Samuel with his eyebrows raised. I am compelled to stay here. But you can cancel it, says Catherine. You are smart, you'll be fine. A word of advice, if an original is daggered, their compulsion is broken. Good luck, Katerina, responds Samuel before getting out of the tomb and leaving the forest. He has a last stop to make, Slater disappeared a month ago. Maybe there are clues in his apartment, and he has to start his investigation somewhere. Slater's apartment. Samuel enters Slater's apartment and find his body, his heart and his hand like he ripped it out himself. This explains why he lost contact with him about a month ago. While the Dine are stronger than a newly turned vampire, they still are susceptible to an original compulsion. Samuel reached the conclusion that only compulsion could have forced Slater to kill himself. With Elijah and Klaus in town, it's hard to guess which one is responsible for this. Searching the apartment, Sam find books on mathematics, others on physics. Slater liked to learn. Samuel chose him for this quality. He is almost sad about Slater's death. It is rare to find someone with so much curiosity for the world. After rummaging through the apartment, Samuel finally found what he was looking for. Everything Slater have heard and see in the past year. All his observations, he wrote them in notebooks. Psychological profiles, relationships, powers. Precious information that could be helpful in the future. Sam will take the notes and leave the apartment. Before leaving he waves his arm and makes a fire start inside Slater's home. Walking out, he takes a deserted street. In the seek, casts Sam will becoming invisible. A few seconds later, a man enter the street and start looking around. Cancelling his spell, Sam will make a motion with his hand, the man's spine break, and he fell on his knees. Who sent you? Nicholas or Elijah? Asks Sam while he uses telekinesis to keep the vampire legs from healing. I, I can't tell you. Please don't kill me. I don't have a choice, begs the vampire on his knees. It doesn't matter. I don't really need to know. But having someone following me tends to annoy me. 
Add Samuel before he turns back and start to walk. So you're letting me go. Thank you, says the vampire still stuck on his knees but happy to live. Oh, you misunderstood me, answers Sam. Interitum, whispers Samuel. The spell effect revealing itself when the vampires start to disintegrate. Samuel noticed that disintegrated someone alive need more magic than doing it with a dead one. While he has an impressive reserve of magic, controlling matter on a big scale require an enormous quantity of energy. If his body cells could absorb energy continuously, his reserve will grow with time to be much larger than now, much more. But to that he'll have to make his siphoner capacity evolve. His siphoner ability is constantly absorbing energy. But it's used to sustain him or replenish his reserve. What he would have to do is to make each one of his cells an energy reservoir that absorb and stock energy. Samuel's thoughts are interrupted when he realizes he arrived at his house. His house is outskirt of Mystic Falls. He had it built approximately two centuries ago. He renovates it frequently. But what this house has of special is the hundreds of barriers and protection spells placed on it. A blind spot to all locator spells, anyone who enter the house become untraceable to any magical means. Days later, after going through Slater's notes, Samuel learned that a lot of happened after Slater's latest report. Apparently Elena Gilbert visited the family chalet. A day later she departed and start making research on William Bishop. Sam is not surprised Grayson has always been careless and overly sentimental, so of course he wanted to tell everything to his daughter. He also learned that Catherine Pierce was here. Slate is right that he didn't try to find more about this because he wanted to keep his distance with the original Elijah. The last entry in Slater's notes is about having the feeling of being followed, and that something big is currently happening. 2010 April 28, the moon is at its peak, Samuel hiding under a strong invisibility spell. Watch Klaus completing the ritual. Klaus drinks the blood of the Depelgenger, and his transformation and wolf begin. Nicholas's bones start to break and rearrange themselves. But before he can finish his transformation, a violent wind appear. Sam observed the Bennett witch walking confidently in the direction of Klaus. The air is charged in magic, Sam will see Bonnie Bennett unleash all her powers on Nicholas. Elijah takes the opportunity, he rushed to Nicholas using his original vampire speed. Elijah tackle Klaus to the ground, and plunge his hand in Nicholas's ribsage. Only the one with supernatural hearing can hear the exchange between Elijah and Klaus. Taking out his hand, Elijah grab Nick and disappear. Bonnie let out a scream of rage. Bleeding from the nose and her mouth, she collapses from exhaustion. A few minutes later everyone have left the clearing. Sam approaches the place where Bonnie collapsed, he takes out a vial. Simul Krua, Krua Simul, cast Samuel. The blood belonging to Bonnie Bennett levitate in the air and fly inside the small vial, filling it entirely. He also takes the time to recover the blood of Nicholas. Hybrid blood could be useful, and Samuel could learn something from studying it. While Sam could have stopped the ritual either by killing Elena Gilbert or hiding her, he didn't. He is not particularly fond of his brother, but the chance to see what a hybrid of vampire and werewolf is capable of is worth letting Klaus break his curse. He also knew that the Salvador brothers have a plan to bring back the Depelgenger to life. Having done everything he had to do, Sam will leave the clearing. Five months later, Portland, in the middle of the countryside away from the city, there is a house. The Gemini's coven live here, arriving at the door, Sam will knock on it. The door open revealing a man with graying hair. Who are you? Asks the man without wasting time. My name is Samuel. I am looking to acquire something and willing to trade for it. Answers Sam. Samuel I can feel that you are powerful, extremely powerful. But so am I, I will only ask this once, leave this propriety and never come back. Says the man trying to close the door. But Sam will block it. You heard of me. You know that making an enemy out of me or my family is a terrible idea. Think carefully before you say no to me, especially since you could gain a lot by helping me. You have something I need, and in return I'll give you something you want. If I recall the Gemini's had linked with the Travelers and with Katsia in the past, everything belonging to her could be particularly useful for you, says Samuel with a cunning smile. The man hesitate a few seconds before he gets out of the house and close the door. I'm listening, answers sternly, the man. One hour later, inspecting the Ascendant in his hand, Samuel let out a chuckle. He traded the Grimoire of Kitsia for this object. Obviously he modified the Grimoire, he wasn't going to give them the knowledge to create a dimension. But even with this the Gemini's coven head almost refused the deal. Samuel had to add information on the whereabouts of the Travelers, and their recent moves. He doesn't regret at all. This Ascendant is the key to a prison world containing six heretics. Siphoner are extremely rare to find, a genetic mutation of the gene responsible for using magic find in one person on 1000000. October the 21st, 2010. Samuel experiment on his subject Odin, a chimpanzee he created scientifically, are interrupted by a surge of magic. Sam can feel that someone dead came back to life, someone powerful enough to channel an entire line of witches. Focusing, he finds the energy signature, and recognizes the magic of his mother. Sam certainly wasn't expecting that, his mother back from the dead. A few hours later, Mystic falls, Mickelson's mansion. So it's really you, mother. You came back? Says Samuel. Yes, my son, we can be a real family again. Samuel, answers gently Esther. There is something I never had the chance to tell you. Thank you for your gift. Immortality allowed me to do what I always wanted, learning. Thanks to you. I saw things I never would have if I was mortal, says sincerely Sam. Esther looks at him with a sad light in her eyes, but a smile on her face. I'm glad you like the long life you experienced Samuel. 
I'm not surprised that you adapt and enjoy to the fullest your transformation, says Esther without elaborating in details. Their discussion is interrupted by Finn. Mother, Nicholas and Cole are still bickering like children. Finn stops in the middle of the room when he sees Samuel. You came. Brother, none of us knew if you would be here to welcome back our mother. Finish Finn. I have a life, Finn. Responds Samuel making Finn flinched and remember the 900 years he spent in a coffin. Don't be mean, Samuel. He didn't know he was interrupting us. Why don't you go greet your siblings while I talk to Finn? Says Esther. As you wish, mother. Answers Sam politely before he leaves to join with Elijah, Cole, Rebecca and Klaus. Approaching, Samuel can hear Cole provoking Klaus. Entering he is assault by Rebecca who hug him with strength. Hello sister, it has been a while since we saw each other, says Samuel. After he talks a little with Rebecca and Cole, Samuel make a sign to Elijah, and the two walk out to talk in private. Something is not right. She is hiding something I can feel it. We should be careful Elijah. Underestimating her would be a mistake. She is dangerous. Explains Samuel to Elijah. You are paranoid brother. She wants to reunite our family. She forgave Nicholas. Responds Elijah. And you are naive brother. She's planning something. And if we don't learn what it could explode right in our faces. Says Samuel. Alright, I'll be careful, and I'll try to learn what she could be planning. Answer Elijah. Don't tell anything to Finn. Adds Samuel. Why? Asks Elijah. He spent 900 years in a coffin because of you in class. Who knows how much he wants revenge, and what he would do to get it. Responds Samuel. A day later. Esther organized a party at the Mickelson's mansion. She requested the presence of all her children. She invited all the important peoples of Mystic Falls. Sipping his glass of whiskey, Samuel see Elena Gilbert along with the Salvator enter the mansion. Later in the evening the guests start to dance. Samuel and Elena finds themselves dancing together. Did we see each other before? I feel like I have already met you. Asks Elena while she dances with Sam. I am Samuel Mickelson. He sees a flash of fear appearing on Elena's face. It must be because of the resemblance. Answers Samuel with a smile. I heard about you. A friend tells me about the rumors. Says Elena. And what did she say? Asks curiously Sam. She said that out of all the originals, you are probably the most terrifying one. While your siblings are vampires, she said that you were the perfect vampire. Cold, calculating and ruthless. Respond Elena in a hesitant voice. It seems your bodyguard can barely keep himself from interrupting us, says with amusement, Samuel. He cares too much. Answers without thinking Elena. They continue dancing until the music end. Have a good evening Elena Gilbert, says Samuel leaving the dance floor with his supernatural hearing. He can hear her talk to Stefan Salvatore. I'm sure that I saw him before a long time ago. I don't remember exactly how, but I think he knew my father, whispers Elena. Why our original would know your father? It makes no sense, answers Stefan. Samuel's attention is diverted by Elijah getting close to him. You were right, she is hiding something. I don't trust her, says Elijah. She asked to see Elena. De Pelginger blood have a lot of applications. We need to know what she wants with Elena Gilbert, answers Samuel. The sweet promises to be stormy, thinks Samuel. Sam didn't imagine that his mother Esther would go this far, killing her children to rectify her mistake to stop the plague she unleashed on the world. She tried to bound all the Mickelson siblings together. It didn't work on Samuel, because he felt the blood in the champagne. He checked with his siphoner ability, and he remarked that magic was present in the glass. Even if he drank it, it wouldn't work, he doesn't share the weakness of his siblings to White Oak. He didn't have the time to warn others before they drink their glass of champagne, as a result they all get linked together, Cole, Elijah, Klaus, Rebecca and Finn. And here we are now, in the clearing, Esther preparing her ritual. The purpose of the ritual is to turn back the originals into humans, and Finn will sacrifice himself killing anyone linked to him. Sam will listen patiently to his brother class threatening Esther. In a second the Salvador brothers will accomplish their simple task, break the Bennett bloodline, so Esther will not be to channel their power. Flashback, one hour ago. Samuel approached the two young vampires. You can't find a solution to the problem, it seems, says Samuel. And who are you exactly? Asks Damon. Samuel Mickelson, Elijah and Rebecca mentioned you a few times. Answers, Stefan strengthening his posture. Pleased to meet you. Back to the problem my mother posed for us. There is a simple solution, says Samuel. Oh, and what is your miraculous solution? Interrupts sarcastically Damon. Damon, warns Stefan in a low voice. What? We don't know him, and the originals have the tendency to screw us over. Adds Damon. Enough. I only want to tell you that my mother get her powers from the Bennett bloodline, break the bloodline, and she will be weakened. Interrupts Samuel. Flashback end. Sam recognizes the signs immediately. He and his siblings start to rush to Esther and Finn, but before they can get to them, they disappear. Before she disappears, she revealed that a new white oak have grown in Mystic Falls in the past. It answers the question of Samuel about how January obtained a white oak stake. Ah, class screams in rage and start to destroy the torches. Calm yourself, she is not stupid, she prepared an escape plan in case she failed, says Samuel. Don't tell me what to do Sam. Answer aggressively Nicholas. She won't stop, and neither Finn, we all saw their determination. Add Elijah. Indeed. We have to kill her, this is the only way, responds Samuel ignoring the provocation of Klaus. Two days later, 
Samuel entered the cemetery after Esther lost the power she channeled. It was easier for Sam's locator spell to find her. Following the footprints, he came to a stop when he saw Alaric Saltzman, Esther and Elena unconscious on the ground a few meters away. He saw Esther mix the white oak stake with the indestructible ring created by Emily Bennett. Crouching down, Samuel grabbed a rock. Why would he get close and have a direct confrontation with her? when he could kill her at a distance. As he prepares to throw the rock, his super hearing alert him that the little brother of Elena and her human ex-boyfriend Matt are coming. Without wasting time, Samuel aimed the head of Esther. Using his supernatural strength, he threw the rock at her head. The stone whistles because of its speed, Esther don't have the time to realize what is happening before the rock impact her head and kill her instantly. Jeremy and Matt arrive just in time to see Alaric throw himself on the dead body of Esther and drinking her blood. Come out, whomever you are, exclaim a newly turned Alaric. Jeremy and Matt get out of their hiding spot and face Alaric. Rick. Rick are all right, asks Jeremy with worry. I have never been better. I'll eradicate the abominations from this earth. I am the extinction of the vampires' races, answers Alaric. Samuel chose this moment to enter the discussion. How would you do that? Interrupts Sam. Esther made of me the ultimate hunter, and she created my ultimate weapon. She said to be wary of you, but you are an original. Your death will be a gift to the world, responds Alaric ready to attack. Are you sure you have the capacity to kill me? Says, bemusedly, Samuel. Alaric doesn't answer and uses his new speed to rush at Samuel. Alaric tries to stab him in the heart, but Sam blocked the blow encounter with a kick. Alaric is pushed a few meters backwards, but regain his balance. The two observe each other and exchange a few more blows. It shouldn't be possible, I was designed to be an upgraded version of the original's vampires. You shouldn't be stronger than me, says Alaric with a suspicious face. It's true, you are stronger than an original, there isn't a big gap but it is enough for you to have the upper hand on one. An upgraded version mean that you don't have the weakness to White Oak? But my mother wouldn't have let you become really immortal, so how can you be killed? Responds with curiosity Samuel. It doesn't concern you. Answer Alaric before he sends a punch to Sam who dodge and use his speed to get behind Alaric, and breaks his neck. Jeremy and Matt point their weapons in Samuel's direction. Don't move. Yell Jeremy. Samuel glance at them and whisper a spell ad somnum. Cast Sam. The two collapse on the ground, sleeping under the effect of the spell. He grab Esther's body. But when he turns back to get the stake, Alaric and the stake are gone. Samuel leave the cemetery, having nothing else to do here. A week later, Samuel's father and mother are dead. Klaus killed Mikkel months ago, and Sam killed Esther this week. The Mickelson siblings separate earlier, they agree to go different ways. Klaus is supposedly dead, but his entire sire line is still alive. This fact makes Samuel pretty sure that Nicholas is alive. Another thing that happened this week is the death of Elena Gilbert, a temporary death. She had vampire blood in her system and came back as one. Leaving the mystic grill, Samuel walked toward the door and he opens it. Elena Gilbert, we meet again, says Sam, who immediately remark a difference in the aura she emits. Hello Dr. By Mickelson, answers Elena with an unreadable face. Can I talk to you in private please? She asks. I was leaving. But I guess I can give you a few minutes, responds Samuel, following Elena to a secluded place. After taking a seat, he waits for her to begin. I remember. When I finished the transition, all the memories that were blocked in my mind came back to me, says Elena. I remember my dad's laboratory under his doctor's office. I remember you, Dr. William Bishop, she continues. What do you want to know, young Lena? Asks Samuel. Don't call me that. My father and you changed me. All my life I felt different, lonely. But it was because of you too. What did you do? I want to know, respond Elena. We made you stronger. Your ancestors were witches, and you are a Depelganger, you already had power. What we did was just activating them and reinforce them. Of all the subjects you are the one with the best results. You show the abilities of pyrokinesis, telekinesis and telepathy. And you were only six. You are extraordinary Elena, your potential is very high. If only you could try to reach it to its fullest explained Samuel. There are others. How many people did you experiment on? Asks Elena. This isn't important, Lena. You are a vampire now, and I don't know how your powers will react to the transformation, but they'll probably become more powerful. You should try to develop your capacities. They could be really useful to you, answers Samuel. Sam stands up and puts on his coats. Goodbye Elena Gilbert, says Samuel while leaving the restaurant. One month later, letting a few drops of blood fall on the Ascendant, Samuel prepares to cast a spell to enter the prison world. Ossium Apatum starts to cast Sam. The Ascendant begins to activate. A celestial event is needed to enter the prison world, so Sam will use the only one available. The full moon, Salui Conductus, finishes Sam. The Ascendant start to generate light and teleport Samuel into the prison world. Prison world, 1903. White, the first thing he sees is snow covering everything. The next one is the Aurora Borealis. A magnificent view. The Geminis really made a beautiful prison world. Using a locator spell, Sam will easily find the only presences in this entire world. Sam put the Ascendant and the Bennett blood in his bag and start to walk to the mansion. An hour later, entering inside the house, Sam will inspect the place and look around. He stops when he hears footsteps rapidly coming in his direction. A beautiful woman wearing clothes of the 19th century tried to grab him by the throat. 
but Samuel returned the situation and grabs her throat before she reaches him. What do we have here? Says Samuel to himself, don't move. He compels her. I'm sorry. I didn't expect company. My name is Lillian Salvatore. May I know who you are? Asks Lillian, scared by the fact that she was compelled. You don't need to know. I'm looking for someone, more precisely six persons. Siphoner and Vampire. I heard they are called the heretics, answers Samuel. Be honest. Where are they? Sam compels the woman, in the basement. They are exhausted, they didn't satisfy their hunger in a long time. Please don't hurt them, they are my family, answers truthfully Lillian. Bring me to them, orders Samuel. Lillian guide him to the basement. In it, he found the six heretics almost completely mummified. Come ruin them. Samuel cast the spell on the six, plunging them into a coma. He won't take the risk of one of them escaping. What have you done? I'll kill you if you hurt them, yells Lillian, angry she attacks Samuel. But before she can even touch him, he uses telekinesis to rip her heart out. Sam levitates the six heretics and goes out of the basement. An hour later, getting back at his starting point, Sam will prepare to get back in the real world. Taking out the Ascendant and the blood, he waits for the celestial event. Cracking sounds coming from the forest alert Samuel. Taking a look, he sees Lillian running at full speed toward his location. He certainly wasn't expecting that. Pointing his hand at her, he uses telekinesis to make her float off the ground. Parata Avalente's artis. Whisper Samuel. The effects of this spell are extremely painful, and Lillian start to feel it. The purpose of the spell is dismemberment. Her limbs are getting ripped out from her body. The pain is so intense that she yell and scream. Without glancing back to her, Sam will look up to the sky and see the polar lights. He casts the spell to leave the prison world. He takes out the blood and pours it on the Ascendant. He includes the sixth siphoner and the spell on begin. Apodemostium. Cast Samuel. Conductor Salui. Continues Sam. The Ascendant active and start to generate light. In a flash, Samuel and his unwilling companions disappear from the prison world and reappear in the real world. The six heretics stayed in a coma state even after the trip they just made. They probably won't ever wake up. After Samuel does what he has in mind, he doubts that any of them will be left alive. Back in the real world, Samuel makes sure the six heretics he took from the prison world are still in a coma induced by magic. After being sure the trip to the real world didn't weaken the spell, he casts a very useful spell, Spadium Valvi. Chant Sam. What the spell does is basically folding space, allowing instant movement between a point A and a point B. Of course, if you don't have a perfect mastery of the spell, you could very well finish fused with a wall or a hundred meters beneath the sea. This is why so very little witches and warlocks have the capacity to teleport. Samuel teleports to one of his hideouts. The hideout looking much more like a laboratory than a criminal hiding spot. Teleporting multiple persons at once is extremely taxing and magic. Samuel is probably the only being capable of teleporting more than three people simultaneously. Before anything else, Samuel proceeds to dissect one of the heretics. He notes that there isn't any difference between them and a normal vampire. But when he starts to inspect their DNA with a microscope, he immediately identifies the witch's gene. The structure is extremely similar to his own. He spent hours and collect all the information he can extract from the heretics. When he finishes, he already has an idea of what the six heretics could help him. While their gene is certainly not as active as his own, it could be used to fully activate it. Sam gene activation is approximately at 87%. But with these six lower versions of himself, he can push it to almost 100%, precisely to 98.66%. Without even contemplating morality and ethics issues, Sam will start to calculate the best course of action. A ritual is without a doubt going to be created, but he still has to adjust to the last details of the formula. A single mistake or error in the ritual and the consequences on his gene could be disastrous. He certainly doesn't want to end up looking like an eldritch abomination. A human form is still necessary, and after a thousand years he is attached to his physical appearance. Two weeks later, Samuel's laboratory. Sam disposes the bodies of the six heretics on a pentagram already drawn with the Pelginger blood. While this ritual is certainly not going to be as dramatic and impressive as the previous he's done in the past, it will be just as useful. Incrementum. Begin Samuel, the familiar glow appearing on the pentagram. Terminus Fractionus. The bodies don't seem to react to the ritual. But on a molecular level, it's very clear that the ritual is working. Like with a case of irradiation, the DNA of the heretics start to break down. Genetic evolutionist. Finishes Sam, the bodies fall apart and liquefy. Inside Sam, his gene responsible for his siphoner ability, start to modify a large part of his DNA. Outside nothing have changed, but Samuel is changing, slowly evolving, becoming something more on a genetic level. If someone were to take a look at his DNA, he wouldn't understand what he was seeing. Sam's DNA don't look human anymore, there is still piece of it. But it's like he followed a totally different evolutionary road. Three days later, 72 hours later, everything stabilized. The changes are finished. After doing a test on himself, Sam will take note of what is new. First, his control over his magic telekinesis telepathy have increased again. But what really changed with his magic is that now there isn't a chant or spell need. Thinking about the processes and the effect is enough. Of course, he still has to exert his will to make it affect the world. Second, his siphoner ability has achieved a state of being constantly active, without needing a conscious effort on his side. The rate of absorption and the 
capacity to store energy also increases. He can now absorb any kind of energy. He could theoretically absorb the full energy released by a nuclear explosion, and if his calculations are correct, and they are, then he can absorb 74% of the energy produced by the explosion of a star. The third and most attractive point for Samuel is that his body can survive extremes in environmental conditions. Like space, the atmosphere of Mars, walking on the surface of the sun, is still a little out of his reach. But he is close. Very close. Before this ritual, he could survive in space. But he'll constantly die and regenerate in an endless circle, until he totally adapts to it. The process of adaptation being slow, he didn't want to take this step until he could explore space to his heart content. 2011, Mont Everest. On the highest point in the world, Sam will think about his next steps. He achieved a lot in the last 1000 years, but he has now become something so alien for the rest of the life form on Earth that he can't help but ask himself what he is still doing on this planet. The Dirum de Terra, the organization he created, does not have any use to him anymore. The multiple times he interfered on human society seem pointless and futile now. Why would he care about human exploration of the solar system and space when he can go and explore himself? Why would he care about their wars, theirs lives, their deaths? Even now in a desolated place he can hear the thoughts of thousands of humans simultaneously. His mental prowess is so high that he have a perfect understanding of every knowledge ever acquired by the human race, except a few subjects he found irrelevant. His magical knowledge is unparalleled, surpassing Katsia by a lot. He has always been apathetic to others, his purpose have always and will always be knowledge. Until today, he found it interesting to have conversations with intelligent men and women. But it has diminished only the smartest and most philosophical still give him intellectual stimulation. For him, observing human is almost akin to observe and watch simple primates, predictable and boring. If he wants to evolve more, learn more, he'll have to sever his ties with Earth. His trip began in a small Viking village, ignorant of everything, living a simple life chained by mortality. But where it will end, he ignores it. Samuel don't have the pretension to say that he is omniscient. But he certainly has become more wise, and stopping here would be a mistake. There is still more to see and understand. Feeling completely disconnected from humans, vampires, werewolves, witches is a strange thing. His last gift to humanity will be the completion of the project. More for curiosity than goodness. Standing up, Sans snap his fingers and clothes appear on his naked form, stopping his own psychological analysis. He teleports back to his laboratory. He still has work to do before he can leave to explore the solar system. Hybrid blood, contrary to Samuel expectations, prove itself useful to understand how to incorporate and fuse monster DNA with humans. If you try to change a werewolf into a vampire, the magic of the vampire side can't integrate with the werewolf gene. Like fire and water, they are constantly fighting each other, and this battle lead to the death of the werewolf. But the blood of a hybrid like Klaus will reveal a perfect fusion of the vampirism and werewolf gene. The spell tailored by Esther take the werewolf gene into the equation and didn't try to overpower the wolf gene. Unfortunately unless if the original spell is used then trying to change a werewolf will always end in the death of the subject. The hybrid blood have the potential to accomplish the transition without death as a result, but Samuel felt another magic in it. A curse? Not surprising when you know the story of Nicholas, Esther didn't want to create a hybrid, and she certainly didn't want a thousand of them running around committing massacre. April 14, 201. Studying the most recent discoveries made on Mars, Sam is brought back to reality by his phone. Taking a look at it, he answers, Rebecca, to what do I owe the pleasure? Asks Samuel still looking over the notes on Mars. Hello Dr. Bishop, Rebecca says sarcastically. So you learned about this. I suppose Lena couldn't keep this to herself. But it doesn't tell me what do you want. Reply Sam without fluctuations in his voice. How could you do that to a child? Even Nicholas wouldn't stoop so low. Rebecca exclaims with anger and a touch of disgust. Will you get to the point? I am in the middle of something really interesting. Answer Sam who have discarded the notes. He's now testing a strange black viscous liquid. You really are the worst. You hide behind a mask of politeness. But inside you are monstrous, a cunning and devious monster Rebecca flood of insult is interrupted by another voice. Dr. Bai. Samuel it's me Elena. I want to speak to you. Interrupt Elena almost reflexively calling him Dr. Bishop. Samuel recognize immediately the lack of humanity in her voice. He has seen so many vampires turning their humanity off. He can notice it easily. Very well. You have a few minutes. What do you want to talk me about? Sam says with little interest in the answer. I lost control. Since I became a vampire my powers begin to grow, and I frequently lose control. I want to know how to master my powers. You are the origin of it. So you must know how. Elena explains with the same unfeeling voice. Experience and mastery over your emotional reactions. If you want to gain control, you have to first master your emotions. As a child, you can do it. I hope you are less impulsive now. Good luck, Elena Gilbert. Sam will answer. Before he can hang up and focus all his attention on this fascinating black liquid, he hears Rebecca's voice again. Do you know about a brother? Do you even care? Rebecca says with sadness. He's dead. Cole is dead. She continues. I'm aware. Sam responds as if it didn't concern him. Are you even a Mickelson? I don't want to ever see you again. Rebecca add, her voice cracking a little. She hangs up without letting him say anything in return. Samuel knew. 
He knew the moment Cole died. The death of an original is not something discreet. A whole line of vampires perishing is hard to miss. Thinking about Cole he remembers when he revealed the fact that he kept his magic to his family. Especially, the reaction of Cole. Flashback. 1821, New Orleans. Sam will just admit to Klaus, Becca, Elijah and Cole that he never lost his magic. While Klaus' reaction was predictable, he was angry and jealous that Sam never was denied a part of himself. Like he was when their mother sealed his will offside, Samuel didn't predict the explosive way Cole reacted to the news. Becca and Elijah were happy. Magic can be really useful, and can sometimes be a lifesaver. They know it and they immediately realize that it is an enormous advantage for the Mickelson's family, but Cole. Cole wait to be alone with Samuel. When they were, he starts to express his rage. How unfair it was that he couldn't access his magic, but Sam could. I was the one that deserved to keep his magic, not you. I love magic more than anything else and you. You. You gain immortality and kept your magic. Cole cry with rage before he tries to hurt Sam. Blocking a punch, then counterattack with kick to the abdomen. Sam will use his supernatural speed to get behind Cole and choke hold him. Sam's physical strength is higher than an original. He could probably take three of his siblings without pushing himself or using his magic. Like always, one of you disappoint me. You could have tried a number of ways to gain your magic back. So don't push your inability to change your situation into a strange sense of righteous anger for me. Just like our siblings you can't evolve, immortality didn't force you to stay stagnant and to never change mentally. You will forever be a disappointment. Sam will say coldly, he breaks Cole's neck and decides to leave the New Orleans. He at least reveal a truth to them, pity Klaus and Cole take it personally. But it is not surprising. End flashback. After reminding this episode, Samuel didn't spare another thought for Cole. The dead don't matter, and the other side will allow Cole a chance to come back in the living world. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.